Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Hi, welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? I'm great. Oh, go Jay. Oh, go Jay. I, I had oh, a go great Jay. weekend. Me too. Me too. Me too. Oh, mm-hmm. Jay, Jalen Hurts, my Oklahoma Sooners, pulled off a comeback for the ages at special. Baylor. Mm-hmm. And the New England Patriots won me two more cases okay. of Diet do from Shannon Sharp. Huh. And how about them Cowboys? Guess what? You know what? I got to amend to that. I should do. How about that Dak Prescott? Guess what? I would, I would get them back. Yeah. You see our record, Skip? What's our record? Level at one. <laughs> Love it, it was, Gail Bayless. You got a long way to go. <laughs> no, we got a long way to go. Yep. I got you I, I, Skip, I got but eight more games. Mm. I got eight more games, and we got the Thunder twice. <laughs> I'm looking good. I'm looking good. The Thunder have been oh, kind of interesting. No, they've, been, yep. <laughs> they've been interesting. You, you got to go to the Spurs. <laughs> oh, 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 really? Hold ah. on. They still play basketball in yep. San Antonio? Uh, apparently. Are y'all yeah, 500? Really. No, Tim Duncan's going to come back and play in that game. <laughs> well, you don't need to. If I Paul love keep, Mondays keep around here. Oh, we have so much to get to today. Did yesterday prove that the Cowboys are now Dak's team? Maybe we oh, should uh, do that for Dak. And did Lamar Jackson just run away with the MVP? But first, we'll start with the Super Bowl 52 rematch between the Patriots and Eagles. After admitting the Super Bowl loss was still on his mind, Tom Brady got his revenge yesterday. Philly jumped out to a 10-0 lead, but Carson Wentz and the offense failed to score again in the final two and a half quarters. Brady and New England slowly chipped away, down one. Julian Edelman, not Brady, threw the go-ahead touchdown pass. Brady had just over 200 yards and no touchdowns. And after the game, Brady said the offense could, quote, do everything better. So, Shannon, does Brady look like he is capable of winning another Super Bowl? Tom Brady will not be the reason the New England Patriots win another Super Bowl. The defense will be a reason why they win that Super Bowl. And I, I saw the quote last year, the statement that uh, his uh, Guerrero, his trainer guru, yeah. put out, Tom Brady's going to play five more years. Tom Brady's not playing five more years. Mm-hmm. I feel very comfortable in saying Tom Brady's not playing three more years. I feel even more devout that Tom Brady is not playing another year past this year wow. in New England. Mm. This, you well, know, because well, you're making the case that he's done now, right? So how can he play anywhere else? What part about that didn't you say? I said this would be his okay. last year in New England. In pro football? In, in New oh, England. Oh, okay. He might, he, he might choose to go somewhere else. Mm. He hell seems to be hell-bent on playing 45. Mm. Mm. Coach Belichick seems to be hell-bent saying he's not going to play for me at the age of 45. Mm. And you had something very interesting to say last Tuesday. Mm. You said, fans, let this sink in. Bill Belichick wanted to get rid of... Tom Brady mm-hmm. for Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Coach Belichick said, Skip Bayless, did you watch the game yesterday? Mm-hmm. That's exactly why mm-hmm. I wanted to get rid of Tom Brady for Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I watched but, Jimmy Garoppolo throw two red zone interceptions that almost cost them a game against Arizona. I watched Tom Brady not throw a touchdown yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, How about yeah. that? But I, anyway, I saw him throw it, it, It's my turn. I'm talking now. Thank you very much. He's not playing another three years, Jenny. Tom Brady will not be the reason. And what we glossed over is that Tom Brady was not very good the last half of the season, but we allowed to be seduced by what he did against Mm. the the 31st-ranked defense in the AFC Championship game, the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. And then we saw him put up a 26 QBR, didn't toss a touchdown, threw an interception in the Super Bowl, but we all forgot about that because Tommy won another Super Bowl. Tom Brady did not play well. Tom Brady has played well one game this year, and that was against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Skip, did you know this? Uh, In his last five games, Tom Brady has (laughs) four touchdowns. Mm. Is that good? For an all-time great player, is that good, Skip? No, it is not good. See what happens, and I will never, ever say I was as great or as good as Tom Brady is. But the thing that I noticed as I started to get older, Jenny, is what I could not do was the consistency. When I was in my prime, Skip, I could throw up 100 yards, 170, Mm -hmm. 160-yard games, back to back to back to back, like it was nothing. But then as I started to age, I get 100 here, 30, 40 there. Mm -hmm. I get you 200. I get you two catches the next week. Mm. So what you're seeing with Tom... You jealous? Oh, my goodness. Mm. (laughs) Sounds a little jealous to me. All I'm saying... 
the numbers speak for itself. Mm. Now, see, fans look at one, fans look at it, he scored, they intercepted the ball, but Coach Belichick watched tape. Mm. Because Coach Belichick saw a guy have a, 26, a 25 rating against the Giants. Mm. Follow that up with a 77. Mm. Follow that up with a 14 against the, the Baltimore Ravens. Mm. Follow that up with a 38. Mm. So you can say jealousy, mm. you can say all you want to, but the numbers bear it out. Mm. He's 14th in QBR. Wow. He didn't throw another touchdown. Hold on, wait a minute. Hmm. I know good and doggone well it didn't take him 47 attempts to get 216. Mm. And that's great. Mm. They might win a Super Bowl, but it damn sure won't be because of Tom mm. Brady. It'll be because of that defense really? that lights out. I remember somebody saying, I'm not sure it was Tuesday, but probably was. Might have been last Monday. New England's defense, said the Hall of Famer across from me, is overrated. It is an overrated product of all the weak opposition. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. The Patriots offense is not even rated. So, wait a second. X-rated. That's what it is. The quarterback you call walk it to him, that I call bounce it to him, could not win a game in which... Tom Brady managed only 17 points at Philadelphia, and he couldn't against the overrated New England defense, the fraudulent New England defense, Mm -hmm. he couldn't muster any more than 10 points. So is he overrated? Like two plus two equals four. He's overrated. I want want you to have the same. I want you to see. This is what I want you to do. Mm. Okay. Because so I'm going to what I'm going to do for you is that I'm going to take Gallup and I'm going to take Amari away Mm -hmm. and I'm going to take Zeke and I'm going to have Lyle Collins miss the last two and a half quarters. Mm. And I'm going to see how your guy did. Because you remember what Dak looked like when he didn't have Zeke Mm. and he didn't have Amari Cooper and Tyron Smith was out. Do you remember? We'll we'll get to this in just a minute. Okay. I'm just making sure. But trust me on this. Dak has not had Zeke all season. Season long. Okay. I can't even recognize this Ezekiel Elliott. I'm sorry. Back to this game. I will give you this. Tom Brady did not play very well yesterday on the road at Philadelphia in high wind that oh, no. also bothered the other quarterback. Boy, the other quarterback didn't look very You're good right. either, he did, did he? Not. Right? That's oh, fair. my goodness. And That's fair. By the way, who won the game? Help me out. The Patriots won. Okay, what do you always say about coming to your restaurant, although you flip it around, now it's only a loser's restaurant? I don't know which way it is. <laughs> Who's but invited? Whichever. It all depends. Yeah, it all depends <laughs> on what, I don't know, on any day of the, day of the week, but whatever. Yeah. All I know is that Tom Brady's team, with Tom Brady at quarterback, did win the football game 17-10, to 10, a pivotal turning point game in the season at Philadelphia, coming off a bye week, and Tom Brady did it in a game in which they could not protect him, they couldn't run the football one ounce of a bit, and in which his receivers look like, what I always say, three guys from Dorchester. Because Mohamed Sanu, I gotta tell you, I, I applauded the move when they signed him, he just looks slow to me. He even looks slower returning punts. Now you've even got him back there and he turned his ankle trying to return a punt. Yeah. And Philip Dorsett got concussed yesterday on the one touchdown pass that he caught. And I thought Nikhil Harry was going to be a difference maker. And maybe he will rise and shine because he's just a raw rookie playing in his first game. But he had little to no impact on that game, (laughs) which brought us to Julian Edelman. There were times yesterday, I swear to you, the Eagles were triple covering Julian Edelman. They didn't just have bracket coverage. They had, like, triangle coverage on him. Like, on third and whatever, it'd just be like... Let's put three guys on him because he's all that Brady's got. Make, make Brady go okay. somewhere else. All right. so, yeah. so it's down to that. And, and it came down to this. And I, I got to say this up front because my biggest takeaway from the game was that's the best I've seen the Eagles defense play since the NFC championship game at home against Jenny's Vikings going into the Super Bowl. Uh, Remember that? Thir- was it 38 to 6? Yeah. Remember, yeah, 37 would the, 30, be the Vikings. Yeah. They, they, they just tromped on the Vikings. Mm-hmm. They shut down. Case Keenum and, and all of yeah. them. Diggs. Yeah, and, yeah. and they just shut them down and be, almost shut them out. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw that defense okay. come back together yesterday. Mm-hmm. I saw a healthy secondary that was starting to click. And I must tell you, by the end of this game, I had some deep, dark thoughts about, boy, it's going to be tough for my Dallas Cowboys to go in there and beat that defense playing at that level because that was impressive. But just as unimpressive was the fact that the New England Patriots are playing with Marshall Newhouse at left tackle. 
trying to protect Brady's blind side is Marshall Newhouse playing for his seventh NFL team. Yeah, why you and when that? Isaiah Wynn comes back this week against my Dallas Cowboys at New England next Sunday, I promise you Marshall Newhouse very possibly will be looking for his eighth team. That's what you got against that Philly pass rush. Because listen, that front seven is big, bad, hellacious come after the quarterback front seven. And Brady was throwing on his heels the whole game. It's hard, man. It reminded me of Dak at Atlanta in 2017 with Chaz Green at left tackle. Can you help, just help me understand this. You keep, everybody always complain, this, and this is the problem that I really have. This is my crux issue with Tom Brady and Tom Brady supporters. When things go well, it's always Tom. But the moment it goes bad, look at his receivers. Mm. Look at Marshall Newhouse. Sonny Michelle mm. can't run. Skip, they won the Super Bowl with that same team. Mm. Sonny not, Michelle. Not, not with Marshall Newhouse at left tackle. Well, Sorry. They, Skip, they got a guy that they didn't resign, so they mm. felt Isaiah wins. But I, I want to go back to the receivers. Mm. Because you said they went to Philly and he pointed up there and they got three guys from North, North Jersey. Mm-hmm. But when Tom... South, Bra- South, South Jersey. Jersey. South Jersey. Yeah. So when, you, when they go there and do, do that, you don't say anything about the, it's Tom Brady. Did you see what he did? You don't mention the receivers, but the moment he struggles, mm-hmm. uh, Nikhil Harry, I thought he was going to have an impact. I did. Nobody thought. Did you see anything from Nikhil Harry? Did you thought he was going to be Randy Moss out the box? Well, I, I thought maybe he'd give him a little snap, crackle, pop, a, one, maybe a couple of big catches where he actually can ran Tom, past Can Tom somebody? get him the ball? Oh, but he got Did you a see him on the throw Dorsett? Yeah. Did you see him? Skip, all I know is he was on the throw Dorsett. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. he threw some really good deep Oh, balls. really? So yeah. that, is that why he had 19 incompletions? Well, With three throwaways? I wanted to try You know those. what? This, this just in. Tom Brady is not mobile. Did we not know that from his first year starting? Oh, I didn't, I didn't not say, mobile. I didn't miss so anything. So, how many that? times did you see Tom Brady forced into a rollout? Do you realize his accuracy drops about 50% when he rolls out of the pocket? Why, he's why? got great pocket feet as far as sidestepping or stepping up in the pocket to avoid a, a oh, hand he got, or rush. He, he got away from a, a, coup, a few sacks mm-hmm. yesterday. Yeah, he did. But when you start to roll out Tom Brady, that means you are flat out desperate because they could not block the Philly front. They were all over him all day, and yet he hung in there. And could I show you one sequence in which I thought Tom Brady late in the second quarter was taking over the football game? It gets to third and seven at the Philly 45. Now, we can see this riff of plays. This is to Edelman. That's that's a pretty sweet throw to Edelman, double covered. And then he throws to Ben Watson, the 38-year-old tight end over the middle, and it's first and goal and before. Then, and then he hits Edelman, and he dropped it. Yeah. And there was a play in there. Rodney McLeod got his hands on a ball thrown to picked. the corner. I don't know if it should have been picked because that's not what you pay him to do. Yes, it is. But, he's okay, 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 but again, it was off his fingertips. But, yeah. But that ball was not off Julian Edelman's fingertips, and that should have made it 10-all. And then the touchdown pass Edelman threw would have made it 20 to 10 because they had a field goal in between. So they almost pulled away. If Edelman catches that ball, that the, the whole playing field tilts to New England at that point. Okay, well, Instead, uh, they were behind 10 to 9 at half. What about, what about the interception that was about to happen mm-hmm. until Julian Edelman roped the guy down by the back okay. of the neck and bent him over? All right. Oh, well, was that an underthrow? Yeah. That was an overthrow. What, uh, it was about to be an interception. Okay. So I want you to have that same because he should have caught it or yeah. Julian Edelman should have caught it. Tough day, man. Oh, hey, oh hey, listen. tough day, huh? Who threw more off-target passes in this game? Help me out. Carson Wentz or Tom Brady? Because every time I looked up, Carson Wentz was wild high, wild yes. low, wild yes. wide right, wide Skip. left. It was horrendous. Skip. Skip. I, I, I'm not here to mm-hmm. debate that. I thought Carson Wentz played one of his worst games that I've ever seen him play, mm-hmm. and you know I watch all his games. But that being said, he still had the ball on Aguilar's hands for the game time touchdown. Mm-hmm. And that's why that guy said that. Skip, remember about, about two about a month and a half ago, the guy said when the building was burning, mm-hmm. he said we were tossing babies and we were catching them saving lives. Uh, you, like Aguilar. You, you consider that a drop on that? Yeah, that's a drop! Oh, stop it! Oh, my God! Stop it! He threw it over the wrong shoulder. Aguilar is looking over his yeah. left shoulder, then he comes back to his right, and it comes straight over his head. That is a really difficult catch, and that is not a drop. Hold on. Is stop it! it. Hold on. So, you you are it. so wrong. Put that in his pocket. Please. Will Shannon Sharp put uh, that in his pocket? That's what you tell me with Amari. Shannon Sharp with a plate. Wait, 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 wait
I'm saying. Is Aguilar bound for the Hall of Fame? Hold on. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Shocked it, to me. That's what you do. Wow. Every time somebody drops a pass for Tom Brady or Dak Prescott, huh. you say you're supposed to catch that. That's not a drop. It hit his hands. That's it hit a his hard hands. catch. Hold on. I thought if it hit his hands, you're supposed to catch it. What's the degree of difficulty on that? I don't I'm, care. I'm, if I'm it's giving a, it a nine on a scale of 10. I don't care if it's 150 on the difficult meter. You said that if the ball hits your hand and your NFL receiver, you should catch it. Okay. Don't change on me today. Okay. Look over your left shoulder. Wait, it's over my right shoulder, and I got to go up here, and it's on the back line, and I got to get my feet inbounds. That's a really hard catch. Guess what? Don't worry about your feet, because all the balls that hit the ground are incomplete anyway. Catch the ball and let the referee worry about your feet. Shannon Sharp would have put that in his back pocket. <laughs> Shannon Sharp is in the Hall of Fame. You hold on. You Ooh. compare. You compare Amari. You compare a Gallup. You compare everybody. Mm-hmm. When they drop a pass for your quarterback mm-hmm. to me, now I'm saying he should have called that. That was a difficult catch. He looked over his left. He, mm-hmm. It was a really hard catch. Yeah. So and what about when he dropped across the middle? Aguilar's not that good. He's uh, not that good. Has he ever been that good? Has he ever been that guy? That, that's not the issue. That's not what huh. we're talking about. He's an NFL receiver, and he's paid handsomely to mm. catch the football. Mm. Did he catch it? Mm. So as bad as Walker to him played, mm. and he was awful. Mm. He had the ball in the guy's hand mm. with a chance to tie the game with 30 seconds to go. But you know what? It wasn't going to happen. I wasn't even nervous about it because when I saw him go like this and go like that, I said, there's no way he's going to bring this one down. Of course not. Not nervous. I, did, you see, I mean, did, you, did you see the one he dropped in Atlanta? Mm. What did he have to do with that one, Skip? Mm. When, when, he, when uh, uh, Walking to him hit him up the rail. Did he have to turn left? Did he have to turn nope, right? That was a drop. Did he have just, to tie shoes? You're making my case. I told you he's not very good. Has he not dropped a bunch of passes in his yeah. career? Yes. Okay. He does. He doesn't have great hands, but that was a hard catch. Think about that, Skip. So, Let that sink in mm-hmm. for a second. Think about what you just said. He's not very good. He doesn't have good hands, but still Philly has to trot that out there. They had to sign Jordan Matthews mm-hmm. because he's playing without d He's mm-hmm. playing without Alshon. Mm-hmm. So take away his top two receivers. Mm-hmm. You take away his number one running back. Mm-hmm. You lose your right tackle. That's an all-pro pro. Pro Bowl player mm-hmm. halfway through the game mm-hmm. and do that to Dak. Mm-hmm. I would sure love to see Dak without Amari Cooper and Gallup and Ezekiel Elliott and Lyle Collins go to New England and do that. How many snaps did Amari play <laughs> yesterday for the Dallas Cowboys? Help me out. I don't need Yeah, you don't know because you didn't watch because he I barely watched. played half the snaps and he's been hurt the whole year. Oh. He, he's been kind of a shell of himself on, from what he was last hold year. Hold on, Skip. Hold on. I said Thank take, you for bringing that up. Hold up. I said take Amari mm-hmm. and Gallup mm-hmm. away and take Zeke. Since Zeke's mm-hmm. not doing anything, mm-hmm. I'm going to have Zeke set this one out. Yep. And I want you to take Lyle Collins and shut him down also. Gallup had knee surgery during this season. He oh. missed two games with knee surgery. Oh. That's what it's come down to. Skip, stop it. Whoa. Hold on. See, you see what you did, Jenny? Mm-hmm. Now, you tell me the meniscus, right? Mm-hmm. You had the meniscus. I did. And you got back on the bike and started pedaling Jenny, mm-hmm. and the next thing you know, a day or two later, you were running. Mm-hmm. So don't make it seem like he had Achilles surgery. He missed two games. That's all I got to say. How many, how many did Jason Peters miss with mm-hmm. knee surgery? I don't know. You three games. Okay. Okay, then. All right. Talk to me. Mm. <laughs> if, if Dallas had half of what Philly has in firepower in its front seven on defense, this division would be way over because well, my team would be unbeaten right well, now. Well, if walking to them had Amari and Gallup yeah. and Randall Cobb mm-hmm. along with Zeke, yeah. oh, this game, this it would be way over. All I know is I can tell you what those Philly fans are doing, calling the radio shows in Philly right now, WIP. They're saying, ah, Nick Foles was the Super Bowl MVP against Bill Belichick, and we scored 41 points and at home. Carson Wentz could only manage 10 points. That's what they're saying today. Yeah. They're saying, where is Nick Foles when we needed he's him? Down catching L's and, oh. He's down there yeah. catching L's in Jacksonville. Okay. Well, he wouldn't be catching L's for this team because <laughs> this team built a shrine in the locker room. He was there, Skip. He had an opportunity to stay in Philly, but he bounced around the league. Mm-hmm. He had a great moment. Mm-hmm. He, had, he had as good as three or four games that you'll ever see a quarterback yep. have. But that's what he is, Skip mm-hmm. Bayless. So for this notion to think that he's a Super Bowl or he's an MVP-level quarterback mm-hmm. is being disingenuous. Mm-hmm. You know that. I know that. All I know is against what you called an overrated New England defense, Carson Wentz through three quarters had a grand total of 94 yards passing. If Dak Prescott had dared to have 94 against Detroit, or any, whoever it was through three quarters, yeah. I would never hear the end of it on this show. I, watch, I would hear about it for the next 10 years, yeah. however long Dak plays. Look, walking to him was bad. Mm-hmm. 
he was inaccurate. Mm-hmm. He missed Ortega Whiteside when the game could have could have really opened the game. He missed him on a rail throw. It got to be. It needs to be an up and down. Mm-hmm. He shot the ball five yards out of bounds. He threw the ball five yards mm-hmm. out of bounds to Ertz. He was awful yesterday. With all that being said, mm-hmm. he still put the ball on Aguilar's hands for a game tying touchdown. Mm-hmm. That's what he did. Mm-hmm. As bad as he was, mm-hmm. but you know why he still had a chance to do that? Because the quarterback on the other side was equally as uh, bad. Hmm. And to wrap up Carson Wentz's day, do you realize that it took until four minutes were left in the game for him to pile up some garbage yards because he had three big throws Your guys late. do that all the time. Yeah. Well, your guy did it to Ortega Whiteside for 29 out of the end zone. It was a nice throw, but it was a broken play where he scrambled left in the end zone and just gunned it up the field, yeah. closed his eyes and threw it. He didn't close his eyes. He knew what the man then was. Then he, he did get Aguilar to catch one for 19. Yeah. And finally, he threw one to Zach Ertz for 21. These are all against semi-prevent defenses where it's just like, here, you can have have that because you can't have that. Oh, so like kind of like they was doing like Green Bay did against Dak when he piled up 4 6 3 I, I didn't Cardale. see any prevents. Oh, 31 3. No, so let me get this it. right. So let me get this right. They're playing prevent 17 10, but they're not playing prevent in 31 3. I'm well, confused. Late in the game, if it's a seven point game and you got to get in the end zone, they're saying you can have that underneath stuff. Right. You can have the So what you think they were saying? What, what Green Bay was saying? Mm. <laughs> that I, I saw Green Bay play nose to nose, press yeah. man the whole game. So, well, go back, go back and look well, at the tape. On. Well, I'm confused then. Mm-hmm. So if they were doing that and Dak didn't pile up those numbers when it was seven nothing, fourteen nothing, seventeen nothing, twenty four nothing, thirty one three, I'm mm-hmm. confused. Why would mm-hmm. he do it then? Mm-hmm. Why all of a sudden? Well, he oh, threw he one, figured him out. He threw one to Amari Cooper. No, he should have been a big game oh, game right there, and what? he dropped it. Oh, and, and it's by a the drop. way, that's a drop. Amari started the game yesterday with another drop, oh. and now Dallas is still tied for second in drops in the league. Skip, well, help me understand. Mm. Amari, the ball hits Amari hands, mm-hmm. it's a drop. Yeah. The ball hits Aguilar hands, mm-hmm. the, 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 the degree of difficulty. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't think Aguilar was going to catch it. That's not a drop. You didn't think Aguilar was going to catch yeah, the, the it? The degree of difficulty of, of the Amari play right here, that's like a degree of difficulty of a one. It's actually, him right there? Actually, it's not. Right there. No. Right there. No, it's gotta not. got to catch No, that. it's not. If you watched him the last 10 games last year, you'd say he'd put that ball in his back pocket. Uh, uh, I'm not Sorry. talking about last 10 games. Yep. I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about yesterday. Mm. Aguilar had an opportunity with the game on the line to make a catch. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, Skip, you, you do realize that you required the job requirement of a receiver mm-hmm. is to make difficult catches mm. in the most crucial of times. It's Never not has always- done it before. When the ball's in the air, Bill Belichick's thinking, I'll take that. Of course. I, I can live with that because it's, it's a max let blitz, that sink, zero blitz. Skip, let, let that sink in for a second. Mm-hmm. But that's what the guy got to play with every week. Mm. The coach on the other side said, I want the ball up in the air to him. Well, and he has to play with that every week. He's got the all-time security blanket in Zach Ertz, which Dak Prescott no longer has. He, he got Jason Witten. Nope, he didn't have that guy. Zach Ertz, it's Zach Ertz or bust. Yeah. And every time he caught a ball yesterday, I said, just triple cover him. Thank you. Because Wentz just looks for, where's 86? I got to find 86. Skip, Skip you do make him, you're making my argument. Because mm. all he has is Ertz. He doesn't have a Michael no, Gallup. in his head, that's all he's got. He doesn't have Michael yeah. Gallup. He doesn't have Michael Randall Gallup. Cobb. Now we're putting Michael Gallup. Gallup in the Hall of Fame? Hold on. Oh, so now, mm. now you just now you came out here mm. and you said Michael Gallup's gonna have a bust out season. Mm. He's gonna you watch out for him. Mm. Now all of a sudden you renege it because you wanna hype Dak. Mm. You wanna hype Dak so much that you wanna well, short change Gallup. He's dropped a lot of balls. Oh my goodness. And Dak has thrown a lot of interceptions. Uh, a lot of interceptions. And he's tied for second in touchdown passes. Whoops. I mean, Hold on. Whoops. Russell Wilson the bye week. Wait, so. One guy, get, one guy is 22 and one. Carson Wentz is throwing to Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. And as they said on the telecast yesterday, those two together, that's probably the best tight end combination. I'll, I'll take, I'll take Amari Cooper and, and Gallup mm-hmm. over Dallas Goddard and okay. Zach Ertz. Right. We're oh. talking about tight ends. And I'm talking, no, hold on. You, you don't just throw to Would the you tight ends. you take him over Jason Witten, <clears throat> excuse me, and Blake Jarwin? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll give you Aguilar and Jordan Matthews. Give me Michael mm-hmm. Gallup and Amari Cooper. Okay. I didn't think you wanted that. I didn't think you wanted that trade. All right, all right. Well, Tom Brady wasn't happy after that one. And now the Cowboys come to town. Mm. So that's a whole different challenge for Woo! Let go, Dak. (laughs) Let's go, Dak. Let's go, Dak. Really? That's what we're saying these days. Did you know that as many as 7 out of 10 adults wished they played a musical instrument? Unfortunately, many never do because they think it's either too late for them to start or too expensive. Musician is an online music education platform rethinking the way people learn music. 
It's the fun, easy, and affordable way to learn guitar, piano, bass, or even singing. Just download the app to your desktop, tablet, or phone and start playing. Musician is perfect whether you're just starting out or have been playing for years. Enjoy thousands of popular songs and expertly crafted lessons and exercises across dozens of genres. Compared to private lessons, Musician is more affordable and lets you learn on your own schedule. You'll get bite-sized lessons, easy-to-follow instructions, and exercises tailored to your goals. Using Musician to learn an instrument like guitar or piano is much better than trying to teach yourself. So, if you've been wanting to learn an instrument or simply want some help getting back to playing, check out Musician. You can get an extended 14-day free trial of their Premium Plus package at musician.com slash play. That's unlimited lessons and unlimited songs on as many instruments as you want for two whole weeks. Just go to musician.com slash play to start your free trial today. That's Y-O-U-S-I-C-I-A-N dot com slash play. No mercy. Got back to their winning ways yesterday, taking out the Lions 35 to 27. Ezekiel Elliott was held to only 45 rushing yards, but hauled in a receiving touchdown and celebrated by doing his best Dak warm-up impression. Dak led the way through the air with 444 yards, three TDs. The Cowboys are now six and four with sole possession of first place in. The NFC East. So, Shannon, how impressive were the Cowboys yesterday? I was very impressed with their offense and Dak Prescott. Skip, but I think I said a couple of weeks ago that was Dak's best game, but this was the Dak best game that I've ever seen him play. Wow. Ever seen him play? Ever seen him wow. play for the Good simple Lord fact is that what we've seen is that when teams normally bottle up Zeke, yeah, he throws for huge numbers, but they don't win. Okay. Not only did they bottle up Zeke, but either Amari was limited, but they, I, I think they put a little extra attention on Amari also. Um, and so he did what he did, going to Gallup, going to Randall Cobb, spreading the ball around to the tight ends. And so when you factor that in, that his running game was non-existent, mm-hmm. Amari Cooper was not the Amari Cooper that we've seen over the last year. And he was able to do that. Uh, and notice I said I was impressed with Dak and his offense because the defense still gave up 27 points to a Dr- Jeff Driscoll-led offense. That's unacceptable. Skip, Jeff Driscoll is, is, is not good. He's so bad, he was, remember now, he started the season in Cincinnati. Okay. If Cincinnati cuts you, Ooh. boy, you got to be bad. Mm. And this that's what it is. And, and he's more of a running quarterback than a thrower. And he was able to throw, I mean, 15 or 26, 209, two touchdowns. No, that's not good. That's not good. But their offense was great. I still believe the game plan. Because, Skip, you remember last year, Zeke had a monster day against this very team. Now, what, and Matt Patricia is a disciple of Coach Belichick. Coach Belichick tries to do what? What do you do well? What do you want to do? Okay, Zeke, nope, you're not getting Zeke. If you can beat me, because basically he took away A, which was Zeke. His B, Amari Cooper, was in and out of the the lineup. So he beat him with C, D, and E. Mm. Gallup, Cobb, and the tight ends. Mm -hmm. Kudos, Dak Prescott. You get an A++ from me today. A plus plus? Yes. Lord have mercy. I don't know what, you, you've gone from an F, <laughs> F, F, like every week you give him an F. I give him what he deserves. And then all of a sudden he gets an A plus plus on yeah. a day he deserved maybe a B. He missed so many throws that I thought he should have made. And yet I'm going to hark back to what I said Friday on this show. And it's the God's truth about the Dallas Cowboys. They are now all Dax team because he's really all they have right now. I told you Friday, it's it's absolutely true. They can't run it. They can't stop the run, any anybody's run. The, the, again, Scarborough yesterday was, was a Bo Scarborough. They, they drafted him yeah. two years ago in the seventh round, mm-hmm. cut him, and he outplayed Zeke. It seems like every week some rival back outplays Zeke. So they can't run it. They can't stop the run. They definitely can't stop the pass. And they can't take the ball away on defense because they're now tied for 20th in takeaways. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the last takeaway. And it's Zeke. I'm sorry. It's Dak or Buss now because Zeke is just, I'm going to say it one more time, just a shell of himself. And I'm tired of hearing that teams come in geared up, put eight in the box and stop Zeke. Baloney! I've been watching carefully. They don't put eight in the box anymore. They just play it straight up because nearly every first down is the predictable, 
hand it to Zeke, up the, uh, right up the gut mm-hmm. for one or no gain. That's all you got. And every time it happens, I just, I just get up and, and pace in the room. Like, why would you waste another down for a none yard game? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well, throw the ball. If, if yep. that's the case, they got the line of scrimmage stacked on first down. They, they don't have you... it stacked. It's just straight up. It's, it, it, it's conventional defense on first down. And for some reason, either the line can't win or Zeke has lost his burst. I keep telling you, I don't see sudden. I don't see any electric. And, and here's the stat of the night for me. Would you believe that Tony Pollard in six games this year has played 12 or more snaps? In those six games, Dallas is 6-0. Six 6-0 and oh. six and oh with Tony Pollard playing 12 or more snaps. What does that tell you? What did you see from Tony Pollard? I saw two or three runs where it looked like he was hemmed in as he cut toward the sideline, and all of a sudden puts a foot in the ground and pew, right between two defenders and gets six or seven yards. You saw him on a little crossing route because he can really catch it. That's what he did more than run it at Memphis, and he caught it for 21 yards. He at least has given them a little bit of electricity, just, just like a little bolt or two of lightning what here or there. What was that last week? Woo, woo, what woo. was that last week? He didn't play. Oh, why? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ask Jason Garrett. I don't know. Ask Jason. I can ask Jason Garrett a whole lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So I'm back to Jeff Driscoll, and I agree with you. And I tweeted before the game, right before kickoff, you can look it up. I said, watch that they will make a star out of Jeff Driscoll today because he will hurt them with his legs as well as his arms. And he's more of a and, runner than he And he did. And, and they made him look like Lamar Jackson yesterday. They went, <laughs> Detroit went 6 of 13 on third down. And despite, despite the A++ day for my quarterback, would you believe – that my offense is backed up second and 10 at the 13-yard line with 154 left in the game, and it's still a seven-point game. And I'm like, oh, no, don't give the ball to Jeff Driscoll because he's going to beat us. Mm -hmm. And they'll go for two probably at home, and they'll probably (laughs) make it and beat us at home with Jeff Driscoll because that guy up at the Jets guy, what's that guy's name? Sam Darnold. He beat us. Well, well, Skip, to, to your point, is that you look at Dak's numbers and he threw for 444. Just imagine if his defense had given him a turnover or two. What would those numbers have been? Mm-hmm. Now, may- maybe, Skip, if he gives them a turnover early, Dak's not in the game. He doesn't pile up mm-hmm. these numbers. But it just goes to show you how methodically they were. If you look at this again, 8 of 14 on third downs. You win a lot of games if you're fit in the mm-hmm. 50 percentile on third downs because now you're getting three more opportunities to get the ball in the end zone. Mm-hmm. They were 57 percent on third down yesterday. And by the way, they are running away with the lead league in third close. down conversions. It's, it, they might be Thank on you record, very much. They might be on record pace. Okay. Thank you. That's all you got is the quarterback converting on third down. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, Zeke has gotten the one or two yards on third down. But mostly it's the quarterback throwing it on third down. And yet yet I want to hark back to a statement that Kevin Burkhart made live national on Fox. Okay. I don't know if it's national, but it was, I don't know if it's regional. It's kind of national, I think. I think it was. But anyway, this is right after Jason Witten's first catch of the game, if we could hear what Kevin said on Fox. Witten told us the formula is flipping. We have to come out and attack with the pass game. I thought that was fascinating. That's it. it they have flipped the formula. No, 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 Yep, 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 Bingo from Jason Witten. Skip Bayless, you are an English major, and you know there's a difference between E-D and I-N-G. And he said flipping. He didn't say flip. So you better stop it, Skip Bayless. I see this. Okay, well, what's the difference? Now that you're just doing semantics. No. You know, semantics. <laughs> you majored in the, semantics. No, no, no. Yeah. Flipped mm. means now we are a Dak Prescott team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says it's flipping, meaning we are going to become. It's changing. Mm. Yes. Well, it's been changing no, this whole year. No, no. So what, what happened? Also, huh. was it, was it, did it flip last week? Mm. So who's the, I, I just want to know. I what, wish it had flipped yeah. last <laughs> week because the last couple of plays went back to 21 and he went when, nowhere. When they played Green Bay, did it flip? Mm. When they played New Orleans, well, did they fell behind, <laughs> behind, <laughs> behind, <laughs> behind, behind. So I, I, well, who the hell, well, who, is Cooper Rush the quarterback I, I kept, start I the kept game? telling you in those games, was 21 in the lineup? Yeah. And Shannon Sharp, the Hall of Famer, keeps insisting, they'll go as far as Zeke will take them. He is the driving force. And they kept handing it to Zeke early in those games, okay. and they just fall farther and farther okay. behind. So, so just the, throw it down their throats. I'm trying to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. So what you're telling me is that when they fall 7 or 14 or 21, Dak Prescott has not mm. thrown a pass in all that time. Well, some he did, but I told you mm. the one to Amari was mm. the turning point of the mm. year so far. Oh, turning point it's of the year. It's him right in the hands mm. and goes into, yeah. into an that interception. One. 
Mm-hmm. But see, but you see, Skip, what you're doing here. What about that circus catch that Michael Gallup made? Mm. Was that Dak Prescott or that Michael Gallup? That was a good throw. It was a back shoulder throw, and he went up, had to fight through the DB to get his hands on it, tipped it up in the air, and then caught it. Oh, so, so that's more of the throw than the I catch. thought it was pass interference to start with. Well, we already know. In fact, I think it was flagged. I think it was. Yeah. Skip. Okay. Flipped. Flipping. Mm. I am well, going. Obviously, I, it's flipping. Jenny, I am going. Mm-hmm. I've already gone. Yes. Mm. To Rodeo Drive shopping. <laughs> I am going to Rodeo Drive to Great shop. Great example. I have been going. <laughs> I have been going. That's what he's saying. We have been flipping into a passing team because that's really all they have. They got. And, I, and I'm I'm being honest about this. I do not love my team, but I love my quarterback. No, you. I don't love them. because when when you go Dak or bust, that's a dangerous recipe, no, man. No, no, no. Because that's, I, that's a recipe be, for any given Sunday disaster. No, because here's what is, what's going to happen. Because this is what's going to happen. When they go belly up, and they will go belly up, mm. you will blame Zeke. You will blame Coach Clapp. Oh. You know the Jenny. I have, and people at home, did huh. you hear Skip Bayless missing Jason Garrett? Not one time. Well, how, let him. well wait a second. It, in, until he hits Blake Jarwin with, with the pass at the end that, that cinches the game, that wipes out the clock. I'm in trouble. Jeff Driscoll's going to beat me. Uh, yeah, way to go, Coach Clapp. No, I'm going to clap no, for you. Wait, no, I, no. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. i got to give Coach Clapp a standing ovation for that Bless game. You. 35 to 27 no. at Detroit. No. i got to give him credit. No. Way to but go, my, Coach Clapp. My point there is. was a story that on Thursday he called the team together and he said, I take all the blame. That's what he told the media on oh, Thursday sure. afternoon. After Motivations. Practice. But my point yeah. is, Skip. Way to go, Coach is Clapp. That when they win, I clap for you. When they win... I haven't heard him. He's being sarcastic now. I hadn't even heard Coach Garrett. But the moment they lose, he can't motivate. So mm. how did, what, what happened? Mm. He can't motivate. Came- thank he- you for bringing up motivation because would you believe that for the seventh time in ten games yesterday, they immediately fell behind? Did they look like they were ready yeah. to step on the throat the of a hopeless underdog with Jeff Driscoll at quarterback? In fact, Pam Oliver said yesterday that Dak had told her just before the game, we need to put them away early so that they don't have any hope with their backup quarterback. Did they do that? No. No, Amari drops the first ball thrown to him, and then Zeke drops it on the carpet, and Detroit recovers and goes boom, 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 touchdown, seven to nothing. You like that, Coach Clapp? Did you you think they were ready to play Uh, yesterday? You see, Hmm. the miscues. Is his fault. Oh. When, the, oh, when it goes. Did like they a, look ready to play on, to you? They're on, never ready to play. Hold on. They better be ready next Sunday or this going to be over hold fast. Hold Real on. fast. The miscues, mm. that's Coach Clapp's fault. Woo. When they go. When they well, did move, they look ready? What? Hold on, Skip. No. Hold, let me, let me Seven times in ten games. Let me, let me, let me make my point. Wow. You can, but when things go well. They move the ball. They have over 500 yards of offense. Dak Prescott's 444, three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Looks like a, a fine oil machine. Mm-hmm. Not one time is the coach mentioned. Mm-hmm. But the moment they lose, he's I, I, mentioned. He's a topic of conversation. Well, I didn't think it looked like well-oiled yesterday. It better look like it next Sunday Skip, at New England. You just where, where said they got little to no Hold chance. On. Skip, you just said mm-hmm. they were, they're, they're running away with third-down conversion. Mm-hmm. They were 8 of 15, which is 57%. 500 yards of, to, uh, uh, of total offense. And that didn't look like precision? Mm. How many holes has number four lifted them out of? It's, it's unbelievable. Just by his body language, he just wills them back into okay, the games. Oh, okay, okay, I get Ooh. all that. Ooh. So, But is Jason Garrett not the head coach then? But he okay. is only when all they right. play bad and lose? So here, here's the thing about Ezekiel Elliott. What did he use for his celebration when he finally took the little, little swing pass? He did the, 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 the dak dance. You know? Okay. He did the dak dance. He does the dak. He does the dak. Yeah. And what did that tell you? I'll tell you what it told me. He does the Dak. It looks good. I thought he was paying homage to a quarterback who is his close friend, yeah. but also who has become the driving force yeah. of the team. I mean, it's, it's, take, it's a crazy. Like, I saw a track and field athletes at Cross Country, mm-hmm. and they're warming up doing okay, that. Doing yeah. the Dak. Okay? <laughs> so he is, in, in the past when he scored, it was always doing the Zeke. It right. was either doing right. this or jumping in the right. Salvation right. Army cattle. cattle. Mm-hmm. What, what, he would always do a Zeke celebration. Mm-hmm. But now he's yeah. doing a DAC celebration. Right. So I think even he, because he's a good teammate, yeah. he's a good guy. And I, and I think, no, Skip, no I, big think ego. I, I think they're really good friends off the field. Yeah, we know they're teammates, but all teammates aren't good friends or best friends off the field. I sincerely believe these two guys, mm-hmm. because they came in, they came in together. 
So there's always going to sure, be, you know, one's sure. the running back, one's the quarterback. And, and the so best thing he did power. yesterday, he he made a nice snag of a ball. Oh, yeah, it was a little behind him. And the reason it was behind him is because it was a blitz, and the DB gets his hand out, and, and Dak had to side. sidearm it mm-hmm. under the DB's arm. And Zeke picked it off the carpet and turned, and there was pretty much nobody home. Hello. And I did see I a small burst. burst. But, but again, it's burst. all green. It's all like, like, oh, now you got an opening. Now you can just sort of take <laughs> off and run it in the end zone. And that's oh, the yes. first burst I've seen for him in about, what, a month? Uh, you know what? Woo. Oh, he's he, he not running in the sand in Cabo anymore? Mm. It's an you know, you, burst there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a $50 million guaranteed. <laughs> oh, big, my goodness. Whoa, you crazy stop. burst. Ooh. You know. Yeah. So we got an overpaid running back and a way underpaid quarterback. Uh, hey, <sighs> now, Troy Aikman, I did read Troy Aikman mm. uh, 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 tweet. Mm. Troy Aikman said, pay that man. Mm. Yeah. Now, so we know, now, we know, Skip, there's no single... We know why Dak hadn't signed this contract. Mm-hmm. And you know the price is only going up. Okay. At this point, it Love is. a man who bets on himself I and love it backs too. it up. I love it, too. Yep. I love mm-hmm. it, too. You deserve 40 million mm-hmm. with 120. Mm-hmm. Because Look you see Dak. with Jared Goff, yeah. you definitely deserve more than Jared Goff. No mercy. A different quarterback that is getting it done. And really, it was supposed to be a quarterback duel between Lamar Jackson and Deshaun mm. Watson. But it was... Lamar, who stole the show, Deshaun, was held under 200 yards with no touchdowns and a pick while being sacked six times. Lamar, however, racked up over 300 total yards and had four passing touchdowns in a dominant 41-7 win. The Ravens are now 8-2 and two on the year, right behind the 9-1 and one Patriots. So, Shannon, how big of a threat are the Ravens to the Patriots? And they they're, great, they're a great threat. Yeah. And, Skip, at the beginning of the year, we knew Lamar Jackson's legs were dynamic. We saw that sure. on full display last year over the last half of the season. The question was, and, and the reason why I thought they would struggle last year in the playoffs, what happens if they fall behind? Because I don't believe his arm talent is good enough correctly. I don't believe he can throw the ball consistent enough at that point, Skip, to get them back into the ball game. They fall they fall behind by a large number. They come back valiantly against uh, uh, the, the Chargers, but they lose. He does a 180. His arm... His ability to throw the football, the confidence and the conviction in which he throws it with, and Skip, they're allowing him to throw the football. They're just not throwing it, oh, it's third and 12. Throw, no, no. They'll throw the ball on first down. They'll throw the ball at any area on the field, mm-hmm. and he's throwing the ball with confidence. Another four-touchdown day with no turnovers. Skip, his legs is dynamic. How he got out of that, I think it was second and one or third and one. He juked a guy, juked another guy just to get back to the line of sc- scrimmage, put his foot in the dirt, squeezed two, two, two other guys, and was almost off to the races again. Mm-hmm. They have the type of team and the way this young man is playing because we're seeing him get better right before our eyes. You know, sometimes, Skip, you, you watch these Nat Geos, they have the simulation where they plant the, they plant the flower in the time elapsed and the flower starts oh, to yeah. bloom. You're watching this guy bloom right before your eyes in real time. Yeah. It seems like every single week he's getting I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. You're not supposed to be here this Good fast. Analogy. Mm. Yes. He's moving fast. Skip, he, he's, he's unbelievable. Okay. And they, they have confidence. He has confidence, and he's gaining. You see the way his teammates talk about him. You see uh, 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 Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Mm-hmm. Oh. You see the way that his team, Skip, when he comes off the field, the defense, they go greedy coming off the field. The offense, they love this kid, and he loves being in that position. And he says, I just got to be a quarterback. He says, I'm, at a, I'm on a team that they believe in me, this team believed in me, and my teammates believe in me. Now I just got to go be the quarterback that I know I can be. Mm -hmm. Skip, they have an opportunity. And Look, they don't have the big, big names on defense. There are no Suggs, there's no Ray Lewis, no Ed Reed. Nope. But they got guys that play hard. The secondary is deep with Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey. Mm -hmm. I think Carr uh, is there. They play well, and they do it. Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters. No, no, Peters gone. Okay, he's gone. Yeah. Yeah, he's an... um, no, he's there. there. Yeah, he's, he's there. there. He yeah, Jimmy yeah. Smith, Marcus yeah. Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Carr. They yeah. got a night. They got a. They got oh, a lot. They, of, got, they got a lot of number one draft picks. To make a long story mm-hmm. short, and they got Earl Thomas mm-hmm. in that secondary. But Skip, they're playing really, really well. And right now, there's no debate. Lamar Jackson is playing the quarterback position better than Tom Brady. The question is, can you go into New England? Yeah. Because you got to be flawless to beat them there in the playoff game. You can't turn it over. You play the cross double. Um, but I do believe right now they're the best team in the AFC, although the New England has one fewer losses. Mm. This team has the ability and the capability with the way the quarterback is playing mm-hmm. to go to New England and win a ball game. Mm. 
One thing I'm virtually sure of, they're going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm almost sure of they won't be able to do that. Wow. I just think it's too hard to beat Brady and Belichick in Foxborough. But if any organization has a history of doing this, mm -hmm. has a legacy of doing this, if any locker room just on its historical significance, the people who have come before them, mm -hmm. if any locker room thinks it can go up and win at Foxborough, this locker room thinks it can because Ray did it and Suggs has done it and they've just done it and done it. They have been Brady's kryptonite at Foxborough. Yeah. No team has played him. They really should be 3-0. They should be. Because, you know, they beat him in Joe Flacco in that, in that game that Joe Flacco played, I think, early on in his career. And then they beat him to get to the Super Bowl. And then Lee Evans dropped the touchdown skip that would have won the game for him. Would have won the game. So every once in a while, in the midst of an NFL season, something rare and wonderful happens where you just sit back and say, huh, that's happening? And it just keeps on happening, and I keep on waiting for it to come back to earth, but it only lifts higher into the heavens. Mm -hmm. And what they did yesterday was highly so impressive, true. where you say, what? That defense made Deshaun Watson, who I love, look awful. Right. He had a QBR of nine yesterday. Yeah. He had that Romo. Six, six times. Yeah. Yeah, he had that Romo on. Romo QBR. Oh, <laughs> that Romo. Lamar a had a QBR one. of 93 as he vaults up the list toward Skip, the he, guy at the top. Skip, he stayed, at the he, top. he's been staying in the 90s an no, awful lot lately. He has. So two switches got flipped in Baltimore just over the last month. The team s switch got flipped, right. but, but the quarterbacks really got flipped yeah. because I don't know what's happened since they lost at home to Baker Mayfield. Yeah. They lost 40 to 25. Yeah. What? Yeah. 40 to 25, and Baker threw for 342 and a touchdown in that game. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, that's well, his what, best how do you game of the year. Explain that, right? Yeah. And, just, and Lamar didn't play bad. It was no, the turnovers. Just the turnovers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are they doing it? What is the formula? They are running away with the rushing time. I mean, <laughs> it's like not even close. No. They're averaging 204 rush yards a game, thanks in large part to the quarterback. Yeah. And next on the list are the 49ers at 149. So they have a 50, 51, 52. Well, no, 55. Four, 56. No, yeah. four, five, right. 55-yard yeah. lead yeah. per game <laughs> in average rush I've never, I've never heard somebody rush for 200. Well, I haven't either. And Lamar Jackson's... Completion percentage has risen from 58 last year, which is just not not very right. good. You don't definitely want to be 60 you know? above. Yeah, and he's 66. And he, he doesn't throw it a lot. His 279 attempts rank only 24th right. in the league. Right. So they're not bombs away. No. But when he throws it, every time I look up, it's not accurate. It's deadly accurate. Right. Yeah. He's looking like robo quarterback yeah. Yeah. now. <laughs> he's just throwing it right on the numbers every time. Like in the end zone, he just throws darts where I say, yeah. oh, that's a touchdown. Skip, to your point about rushing, is because they have three guys that on any given yep. Sunday can go get you 100. Mm -hmm. Gus Edwards, Lamar Jackson, and Mark Ingram. Mm -hmm. All of these guys on a given Sunday yep. can go get you 100. Mm -hmm. And there might be a time or two, Skip, there, and there have been a couple of games, two guys of the three will go get you 100 mm -hmm. in the same game. And when you can run it like that, Skip, guess yep. where that opens? Play action. Mm -hmm. And you see guy, Skip, that Mark Andrews, he loves some Mark Andrews. And Mark Andrews make catches for him. Mm -hmm. His tight end, the other tight end, Boyle, mm -hmm. make good, good, uh, great catches for him. Mm -hmm. Skip, they're playing well. And the thing is what hurt the Houston Texans, hmm. when you play an aggressive style defense, you need to get the ball out of your hand. Hmm. Skip, Deshaun was spent too much time trying to make the but big he play. he does. That's what he does. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's almost feast or famine. Yep. And he ran himself into a lot of sacks yesterday, Skip. And a lot of punishment. Yeah. Man, yeah. he takes some shots. He does. Whew. So Last week, I thought we yeah. were going to do this topic. We didn't do it on the show, but I was thinking... Who would I take for the long haul? Because I love Deshaun Watson. Right. And I, I kept thinking, eh, I'd take Deshaun for the long haul because he can just throw it better than Lamar. And now I'm starting to wonder. I, I don't know about that. Right. Maybe not. Yeah, After I don't, yesterday. I, right? I don't know if he, how much longer he's going to take that kind of punishment because he's definitely taking more punishment than that Lamar. That is correct. Lamar takes some down the field, but right. it doesn't seem to phase him right. at all. Right. right. A different kind. So Fox Bet still says that New England is a heavy favorite to win the AFC. Right. Mm -hmm. And if I look at the schedules, I say, you know what? I think Baltimore's schedule is a little harder. It okay? is. It because, is. I, I would agree with that. Whew. 
Man, Rams. they got at Rams, yeah. at Rams on Monday night, Monday. and then they got the 49ers at home. At Bills is no cakewalk. Jets should be a cakewalk, but then here we go, and it gets at Cleveland. Listen, <laughs> Baker's had their number. He beat them in overtime uh-huh. last year as yeah. a rookie at Cleveland. Remember this? So yes. I, I don't think that'll be an easy end. But you watch. The Texans team that showed up yesterday against Baltimore yeah. won't show up again at home against the Patriots. Okay. They'll play their tails off against the Patriots. Okay. You, you might be right. And, but and, I'll still take the Patriots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, Skip, that December 18th is still looming. <sighs> I think that's the game right. that people want to see. All right, but but what's looming is that there's some trap game, you know, like, like some minefield games on this thing where you could lose at home to the 49ers, you could lose at the Bills, you could lose at you, Cleveland, and you definitely could lose at the Rams on Monday night. Yeah. My point is they might lose a couple of more games. They might. <sighs> Ooh, they man. just might. Skip, if if we, they lose one more, they're going to be in trouble. Right. Even, would it be. even if the Chiefs go get right. revenge at New England. If you'd ask me last year, could the Ravens go to L.A. and mm-hmm. beat the Rams? But I don't know if you noticed, but have you seen the way Jared Goff is playing lately? They I can saw eat, it last night. They can, they can it, eat. it was like Trubisky or Goff, Goff or Trubisky. They, they look like Skip. the same guy to me. Ooh. Skip. And that is not mm. a good comparison. I still, and, and, and you and I questioned when it happened. Yep. What the hell was Chicago looking at? What made I them know. think, Skip, that you know what? Mitchell Trubisky moving forward would be better than Deshaun Watson. Mm. Skip, I can give you Patrick Mahomes mm-hmm. because he played in the Big 12 Texas Tech. Yep. And yeah, he was exciting, but a whole lot of people didn't see Hard his game because know. you're not staying up that late, Skip. Yep. So I'll give you that. Okay. But Deshaun Watson was on television an awful lot. Mm-hmm. And you chose Mitchell Trubisky, who couldn't beat Deshaun, but you said, you know what? We believe he'll be a better quarterback. Mm-hmm. That's why they're getting killed, and they pulled a guy with two possessions left in the ball game. They said he was hurt, beat they up. They saying hip. You know, hip and shoulder kind. both. Yeah. That, that, that's where you come up with all the mm-hmm. excuses. like Or Chase Daniel. He, okay. Like, where he go take it? Yeah, okay. And to finish this up, New England does get to close with at Cincinnati and then at home Buffalo and Miami. So Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Probably if they get through the next three. Yeah, the next month is going to be tough for them. The 17th, where well, they won the Eagles. They get the Cowboys next week. They get a Texans at Texans. And then the, 20, uh, the, four, the eighth, they get the, uh, the Chiefs at home. Mm. So the early, next month. My early preview of Dallas at New England, I will be shocked if Dallas wins that game. I'm not. Shocked. I'm not. Really? Yes. I'm, putting, I'm putting do on it. Mm. I'm Which way? I'm going to the Cowboys. Well, I'm not going to bet against my team. Hold on. Crazy. You, I guess, hold on. You just told me there's no man I bet against in sports. Uh-huh. Tom Brady. I'll never bet against Tom Brady. Mm. So, in other words, what? And an mm. angry Tom Brady. Mm. Yeah. Because he stunk it up. Pulled his pants in decent exposure. Everything. The Philadelphia police the looking for him right now. Better. They said it was a, a tall, six-foot-four white male. Mm. Said he was tired. Pulled his pants down the middle of the field and took and did something. Yeah, Let's see. Eagles defense, Cowboys defense. Uh, I, I think Brady's well, going to get healthy. Well, I got the Cowboys. Isaiah Wynn is back, probably. I got the Cowboys. Yeah. How about them Cowboys? Yeah, how about them? You okay. need them. <laughs> no mercy. Dak Prescott had his third game of 400-plus passing yards this season in yesterday's win at Detroit. The Cowboys also regained sole possession of first place in the NFC East. And meanwhile, the Eagles fell at home to the Patriots. Carson Wentz completed 20 of his 40 pass attempts for 214 yards and a touchdown. Wentz also fumbled twice, losing one of them. So, Shannon, has Dak proven he is better than Wentz? Really skill, baby. Yeah, real. This is real. After one game, that's what you want to do. You want to do this. You do I want to do it? Yeah, you want to do, do it. Do what you want to no. do. No. Skip, look. Wentz had a horrible day. Mm. There's no way around it. Dak I'm played- looking at the seasons. There are two seasons. Well, this is a big one for Carson Wentz. This both is got through. It looks no. like, okay, mm-hmm. Wentz would have finished twice. In QBR in front of Dak, it looks like Dak is going to finish this year in front of Wentz. Mm. So they're 2-2. Two, two. Okay? Mm. Dak has won the division twice. Wentz has won it once. TBD right here. Mm. I believe, still believe Philly going to win it. Okay. Now, with that being said, look, he had a bad day. After Lane Johnson left the game, that's when every last one of those sacks occurred. Five sacks, he was sacked. You keep talking about Brady was constantly being harassed. Mm-hmm. They took him down five times, hit him countless others, forced two fumbles in, out of him. Hmm. They got one, the, uh, the Patriots recover one. He sure holds that ball a long time. He does, he yeah. does, and uh, he's, he was inaccurate yesterday. Threw the ball off target a lot. But, Skip, he's doing this without d Jack. He's doing this without Alshon. If you take Michael Gallup, you took Amari Cooper away for any substantial amount of time, it's hard for me to believe that Dak Prescott's going to put the numbers that he's putting up currently. Give him that situation. Put him with Zeke, that offensive line. 
Amari Cooper, Gallup, Randall Cobb. Mm. Flip him. He mm. goes to Philly. Come on. Mm. We know what's going to happen. You, you know what? That little running back from Penn State they took in the second round, he, he's been giving them more pop than Zeke's been giving Dallas. He, he ran hard and well yesterday. Dak has five more interceptions, nine mm. to four. Mm. So did well, he what prove? What do the touchdowns look like to you? Mm. What do you mean? Touchdown 20, What is he, 22 to 9? 21 to 16. Okay. Yeah. 21's tied for second in the national. Yeah, exactly. well, 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 okay. uh, well, hold on. Yep. Mm. You either first or you last. <laughs> you know what? That's how it works? Anybody says, hold on, you know what? I'm entering this race to finish second. Mm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's that what we do, no Skip Bader. So you guys, I don't even know why you brought that up. Mm. That's what Ricky Bobby's father told him. Yeah. And then Ricky Bobby woke up when he was a man and decided, wait a second, that doesn't make any wait sense. Wait a sec. Yes, it does. Huh? That's Talladega Nights. Yes, I do. Yeah. And you know this, Skip Bayless. You, would, and you don't do anything to be second. Mm. You know what? If I can be the second, I'm okay. No. Mm. You want to be number one. Not He's not number here. one. Mm. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Russell Wilson is 22 to one. Mm. Can I interest you in that? Mm. I thought I could. So, thank you for bringing up Russell Wilson because you've got him still leading your MVP race. I slightly, slightly, I do. Slightly ahead of Lamar Jackson. Yes. I'm here to make the case that Dak Prescott belongs in the conversation. At six and four? Because if Dak Prescott hadn't had the ball taken out of his hands at the end of the Minnesota game and put in Zeke's hands, really for the last three plays, we would be having a slightly different conversation because there's one win. And if Jason Witten had gotten the call of pass interference in the end zone on the two-point conversion pass to tie the game at Jets, I believe Dallas would have won that game in overtime because my quarterback was on a tear through the second half of that game. So let's just hypothetically say, what if he had these very same numbers and all of a sudden they they were eight and two. Wouldn't you be talking about him as but an MVP? Th- th- we, we would, but, but Skip, he's not. If Tom Brady was playing mm-hmm. better, we'd mm-hmm. talk about him as an MVP, I but don't he's think not. Would, but look at the numbers. Dak Prescott, 10 games into the season, leads the whole league in QBR. Okay. 10 games into the season, he leads the whole league in passing yards. Is that good for a guy you say you, you've been telling me for years is not accurate? Dak Prescott, not consistently accurate. I've heard it again and again. If you want to know the truth, he proved last year over the last 10 games he was better than Carson Wentz because he he beat him head-to-head twice. Skip, stop saying that. Well, he did. It's not – oh, so so Carson Wentz plays defense now? Well, I'm just saying that in the game at Jerry World, my quarterback in the fourth quarter in overtime threw for 243 yards and three touchdowns. But the game should have been a blowout. And I'm seeing there that, boy, he's just better than Carson Wentz. The game should have been a blowout. Had your quarterback not thrown three picks and kept us in the ball game. Who is more consistently accurate, Dak Prescott or Carson Wentz? This what year, have you seen? This year has been mm. Dak. He's at 68% completions to 61% for your guy. Your guy, I watch him a lot. In fact, I've probably watched just about every snap he's taken this year. And there are too many sort of deer in headlights looking, looking, looking. I got to find 86. Where is he? Where's Goddard? I got to throw. And then, boom, he t- there's no question his arm strength because he can really wing it. Well, well, I was watching the game yesterday, and he holds the ball too long because he's always trying to get, and I think Alshon mentioned this. Skip, there, he had Zach Ertz in the flat for five yards that would have made it probably third and eight, third and mm-hmm. seven. But he throws the ball way, try to get it way down the field. Now you come back, it's third and 15. Mm-hmm. No, you, it's okay to take the short stuff on second down or first down mm. and give yourself something more manageable on third down. Mm. He needs to get that through his head. And I don't know if, it, I, I don't think Dougie P can emphasize that enough. Everything is not meant to be a home run. We don't always have to hit it out the park in order to be successful. Mm. And I see too much of that. I see him too much of patting the ball, Skip, because he's trying to give receivers extra time to get open when there's somebody that's on a shorter route that's already open. Mm-hmm. Give him the ball. Mm. My quarterback gives them the ball. Yet, you have often accused my quarterback of dinking and dacking. Yards per attempt this year. Hmm. Dak is 8.8 yards per attempt. That's second in the league. Your guy is 6.6 yards per attempt. That's 31st in the league. So my guy's throwing it down the field much farther than your guy is on average. Skip, 
when he got the name, hmm. was he doing that? You know how nicknames. I, I come, didn't think so. Yes, he, yes, he was. Actually, yes, he was. He was dead last in, in, at that point in time. Skip, you do know, like, once you get a nickname hmm. and people call you that for an extended period of time, hmm. that's going to be your name for so perpetuity. So now the label stuck? It's stuck. Okay. Oh, dig it in Way to go. Way to go. <laughs> so not only is my quarterback. Oh, Skip. Wait. Not only is he tied for second in okay. completions, his receiving core is tied oh for goodness. second in drops. Oh, my goodness. In touchdown passes. I'm sorry. Tied for second in touchdown passes. Plus, tied for second in drops. And help me out. Has he had his soulmate receiver, Amari Cooper, for the whole – nope. It's here yeah, and there. Here He's and been there. there. Huh? He's been there. Yeah, some and some not. And yesterday he played exactly 55% of the snaps because he's still got a knee or an ankle. I don't know what it is. He won't talk about it. They won't talk about it. But he stands and watches a lot of plays. Well, because they won't talk about it because I don't want you to try to key in on what it is. Mm. Is it a knee or is it an ankle? I don't because, know. Because, you know, as soon as they put it on the thing, people are going to start targeting that injury. So mm. I ain't telling you nothing. Mm. It's, a, it's a leg injury. So does my quarterback have Zach Ertz? Nope. Does he have Dallas Goddard? Sorry, doesn't. Mm. Nope, nope, just, nope, nope. Skip, we just had this conversation. Mm. So I'll give you Ertz. I'll give you Goddard. I want Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. You mm. want a deal? Mm. I'll take those two guys. Okay. Mm. I want I want Coop and I want Gallup. No, but I'm going to give you Jason Witten. No, 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 no. I don't want that. Shannon Jarwin. No, 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 no. I want Gallup. I want Gallup and I want Cooper because you seem to think. That Zach Ertz, so you should have no problem. Says, okay, I do that straight up. Mm. But but again, I don't have that security blanket. Did you see Jason Witten yesterday? You've been making fun of him. You know he can get open for five yards and catch it. Yeah. Sometimes for eight yards and catch it. And then what happens? Nothing. Skip, you do have a security blanket. It's mm. called Michael Gallup. Mm. I'm not Michael Gallup. It's called Amari Cooper mm. because he can beat any coverage. He can when he's right, and he hadn't been right all year. He still got open. Got hurt in training camp and was never right from day Man, one. Look here. Ain't nobody that hurt. He done put together 180s and 200-yard games, so stop this. Mm. Now, he might be more Nick now than what he has been in the past, but to say that, oh, he just, well, he's been just gutting this out. With, I don't know how he does. Stop it. Mm. What did I tell you before the season started? No quarterback in the National Football League will have more pressure on his shoulder pads than Carson Wentz will because of the Nick Foles legacy that he left not only in the locker room, but – but in with that big old Super Bowl trophy oh, yeah. and an MVP trophy. Yeah. And he hung 41 on Bill Belichick and won Super Bowl MVP. You believe that's the same defense? Uh, you do believe that's the same defense? I think it was really, it was, it, I think it ranked fourth going, it was fourth in the regular season that year going into the Super Bowl. But right Bowl. now they're playing at a historic pace. Mm -hmm. They're giving up about 10 and a half points a game, which is on pace to beat the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, I thought you meant Philly's defense. No, 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 no. Philly's no. defense is really good going the into Eagles the Super Bowl. Eagles defense. I mean, yeah. not Eagles defense, yeah. the Patriots defense, yeah. excuse me. Just remember, that, that Super Bowl combined for the most yards the two Super Bowl teams have, have ever compiled, yeah. except it was for all time. It wasn't just for the Super Bowl. Yeah. What is it, like 1,100 yards right. they put together? Because Brady has 634, I think, that he threw for 505 to have another 100-something rushing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Philly was over 500 mm -hmm. because they had well over in so, the So no in. two quarterbacks or no two teams have put up more yards than those two did in a Super Bowl. Brady set the all-time playoff okay. record for any playoff. And came to me, so I had to do him right. Oh. Yeah. I How'd thought losers come to you. Oh, so that's that what it was. Oh, so. Yeah. Lately, yeah. So what the about theme. record setters? Do they get in? I love record setting losers. Oh, you do? Those yeah. are the best. Uh. <laughs> because on one hand, they want to be excited because they broke a record. Uh. But then the realization set in, but I caught a nail. Did mm. they get a private room? So who has more pressure going right right forward? <laughs> because all of a sudden Big now. Oil. Hmm, the Eagles are a 500 team, and those Philly fans, you know how quickly they are to Ooh, boo, they're and they're going to be saying, w w what, what is up with our quarterback? We hold Tom Brady to 17, and he can't win a home game? All I'm saying is this, is that the man is handicapped with Aguilar. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, Jenny, this is before you got here, okay. but every week, this man used to come out here, and there was a certain number, 88. Okay. And he, got, he used to throw up the X. I used to see him on his old show, throw up the X. And it got so bad, he said 88 was handicapping his quarterback. Well, he was. Oh. So what the hell is Aguilar doing? Oh. Well, when I threw up the X, he was the best receiver in pro football. And he deserved the money he got. So if, but then if, he couldn't keep earning If Dez was handicapping your quarterback, what the hell is Aguilar doing to walk it to him? Okay, but Aguilar never was Dez Bryant to start with. Dez it, was Dez. It does not matter. 
at the end of the day, look, if I come home, if you are a, 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 a James Beard Award winner uh-huh. or you some mom that's, that's baking dinner mm-hmm. in, in Midwest Ohio, if you burn the meal, you burn the meal, right? Yeah. So if one guy is handicapping the quarterback and the other guy is handicapping the quarterback, you're handicapped. Aguilar, you saw that, Skip Bayless, when Dan Brad was dropping the... Oh, I remember Seattle. Remember, he the ball came off his hand. You're like, Dan, catch it. Mm. And, then, and then you came here and said, I'm done. I'm done with Dan. And, and what did Jerry soon say? I'm done. I'm oh, done okay. as well. Out. Yeah, he Gone. Suit. Let me ask you a question. Maybe I was ahead of the curve. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Do you believe Aguilar will be there next year? I don't know. Skip, they brought Jordan Matthews back. They love Jordan Matthews from Vanderbilt. Skip, University. nobody else does. He was the all-time SEC leader in receptions Skip, and about, yards. Let me he tell, was. Let me tell you how much they love him. They love him so much they released him. Mm. And every other team he's gone to, he's got released. Mm. But because they don't have anybody else, and he knows the offense, they keep bringing him back. What does that tell you? John Gruden traded Amari Cooper. Didn't love him. Okay. Okay. Need, so it happens. Move no, no, no. home. He it was tra- the right step for him. He traded him. He didn't release him. No. He traded. He got a first. One. Yeah. He got rid of a yeah. lot of things that year. And also, uh, John Gruden's starting to look pretty good. Now things are they played up. up. The defense. Ooh. No mercy. Well, it was supposed to be a QB duel between Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson, but it was Lamar who stole the show. The Ravens QB racked up over 300 total yards and had four passing touchdowns in a dominant 41-7 win. Two of those touchdowns were to running back Mark Ingram, who was pumped up introducing Lamar to the media after the game. You got to see this. Now I would just like to introduce you all to the man, the myth, the legend, the MVP front runner. If anybody else got to say something different about that, then come see me. Yeah. I'm right here in Beemore outside the bank. If you got an issue with that, come see me. Whoop. I'm about that. Whoop. Big trust. Whoop. 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 Lamar Jackson Big in the flesh. Big yes, sir. Big, Big. Big trust. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fox Sports NFL analyst Michael Vick joining us today. You just love the energy there. Okay. <laughs> Michael, oh, man, how much better can Lamar get at this point? Um, I, I think he can get better, but I, I think right now he's probably, you know, he's probably peaked out. Um, what more can you get? I <laughs> think as far as him moving forward in his career, it's just going to be about consistency. And that consistency is going to lie, um, you know, him playing this game and being himself, not changing anything, but at the same time, how long can he keep this coach, how long can Baltimore keep this coaching staff together to coach this offense? Mm. When I think about Lamar, his success right now, I know where it comes from. Offensive coordinator, Greg Roman. It's mm-hmm. coming from James Urban, who's a quarterback coach. And I know he spends a lot of time with Lamar because I spend a lot of time with him in Philadelphia. And I know how he can be as far as detail. Mm. Um, but it's going to be about how long can he stay in this offense? You know, and this offense is so suited for him. I would do everything to try to keep... Mm-hmm. Greg Roman, close to Lamar as long as I can. Mm-hmm. But I think he's, he's shown us everything that he's going to do moving forward. Now, we understand that this is what you're going to get from Lamar. And he's done it so consistently that I don't see anything changing. But if this offense changes, where does mm-hmm. Lamar go from there? Okay. So that's a big concern for me. So he's done everything right. He's made all the right decisions. Play inside the pocket, outside the pocket. Um, just shocking to me as far as what he's been able to do. And it's just a great thing to see him because we had conversations about this coming out. And again, for the record, you have helped mentor him and yes. been in pretty constant yes. touch with him. Yep. And we talked about him coming out of college, and I told him, look, Lamar, nothing's going to change, really. You know, you just got to go be yourself. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what type of offense he was going to end up in, but I, when I seen Greg Roman in that, in that meeting room last year, I knew something was brewing and it mm-hmm. was going to be special. So... I'll go back to him just being in this offense consistently for years, and that will determine if he's going to be one of the greatest of all time. Have you been in touch lately? Uh, I reached out to him last week, but to no avail. But I, I, I caught him, like I guess, like it was like a Tuesday, and it was his day off. Yep. Um, but I try to leave guys alone during the season, yeah. just let them do their thing. Skip, John Harbaugh put this plan in motion when they selected this kid because they brought Greg Roman on. Marty Mortenwick was the OC. Yeah. But they knew in order to maximize what this kid could do, they needed to find someone that thought outside of the box, someone that was familiar with this type of skill set and what it can do in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I believe the sky's the limit, Skip. He can go even higher because I believe he will increase his uh, uh, completion percentage. 
He's playing unbelievable. Skip, you know, when, when I look at him and I watched him in college, and I'm like, okay, yeah, he can run. But there's a difference between running in college like he was running and running against the NFL. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because, you know, yeah. in college you run for, <laughs> you run for books and yeah. study hall and meal plans. <laughs> in the NFL you run for mortgages, you run for college tuitions. That was something entirely different. Those are grown men mm -hmm. that's getting paid to stop you from doing that. He's running the ball even better. And I knew he could run it, but he's running it even better. And I was like, okay, yeah, if he can progress and if his arm come becomes half as good as his leg, man, there'll be something. Mm -hmm. But man, Skip, I didn't expect this. I don't think anybody, if John Harbaugh tells you, if anybody tells you, they say, oh yeah, we knew, he, by the second year, we knew this was gonna happen, they lied. Yeah. Maybe by his third, fourth, or fifth year, Skip, because yeah. you see the progression. But where he is now, Skip, he's, he's serious. This ain't no, you know, Skip, you know a lot of time, guy have a great game, you throw his name in the MVP discussion. Well, you might get some, no, 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 no. He legit. This is real. He's smack dab yeah. in the heart of it. And basically, it's a two-horse race right, right now between Russ and Lamar Jackson. Everybody else is it's, it's almost like these two are out there. It's like Secretariat, both are Secretariat. And Ron Turcotte's good when he turned around. He, wait, I think he turned back over this shoulder. Look, <laughs> where is everybody? And it was 31 links back. This is how far they are in front of the field. Skip, this dude is legit. And uh, I just see, and I talked about this earlier, we see this flower blooming every single Sunday right before our eyes. Because, Skip, you know, we threw for five touchdowns, open had a court, perfect quarterback rating. We're like, yeah, but that's the Dolphin. Hey, they tank it. Four. And then he came back and he did it again. And he's done it again. And he keeps doing it. At some point in time, it's not luck. Yeah. It's not, it's, he's good. He's as good as advertised. And I believe he's only going to get better. Uh, the question is, like you said, you know, you have success. Teams come in and try to steal all your chickens, Skip, because they lay, they lay in golden eggs. Mm -hmm. So they start plucking Greg Roman, or they start pl plucking the quarterback's coach, wanting him to be an OC, or they want Ray Roman to be a head coach. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very interesting. I agree with you. How long can they keep this okay. together? To me, he's secretary <laughs> by himself. <laughs> you think he's by himself? I, I think he is you running do. away with the MVP race. And I'm going to use Michael's word. It's shocking because... I thought he'd be good, but yeah. I didn't think he'd be like this. No, not because in the second year. Yeah. Almost by the snap, you can see him get a little better and a little better yep. until he's, he's getting up in that great category. Uh -huh. It's hard to do for a month what he just did to the National Football League. He just tore it all apart. He yeah. did. Their team is starting to tear it all apart because I think Houston's still pretty – I know they lost J.J. Watt, but still, yeah. I think they're – Pretty good. good They're not like that. You, you, to do that to them, to just level them, just annihilate them and dominate them and make Deshaun Watson look hapless, just, just yeah. look sad in the pocket where he's, he's looking and he's looking, he can't find anybody. He has a QBR of nine on a scale of zero to 100. Yeah. It, it was hard to watch Deshaun yesterday, and it was a joy to watch the other young man. Yeah. yeah look, it's still, look. And it's, it's still, people don't know this. But the league offense, the team, they scored the most points. They lead the league in scoring. Man. And they're running away with the rushing <laughs> title as a team. Yeah. Think about this deeper than that. It, uh, Lamar was the last what, quarter or the last player in the green room. Ozzy traded back up to get him. Yeah. Because he was 30 seconds. I remember second. being in the, in the draft room that day and talking to Lamar and saying it's going to be okay. I talked to, uh, I think, Marty Morningwick earlier that day. Mm -hmm. I told him it's going to be okay. I didn't and, know if he was going to get Marty from And I knew Philly. Marty from yeah. Philly. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was, Marty was and, OC at, you know, at Baltimore at the time. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Rodgers also sat in that green room for mm -hmm. a long time. He did. Huh. And what came from that? So much motivation. And so, it's a drive that comes along with that. And I think that's something that he'll never forget. Mm -hmm. So the more we can continue to compliment him, mm -hmm. you know, make comparisons, the harder he's just going to go. And yeah. it's not going to stop. And there's the intangible in MVP that you just saw live at the podium from yeah. Mark Ingram. This team loves Spectrum. this kid. Just love, they're feeding off him. They believe in him, and now they're starting to believe in themselves. Yes. And the, the defense is feeding off him. Mm -hmm. The receivers are feeding off there's him. There's nothing like when oh. your team believes in that guy. Yeah. yeah. But there's also a situation, Skip, no matter, what the, no matter what the front office, what the head coach says about that quarterback, the team doesn't believe in him. Hmm. And sometimes, it, and like you said, uh, uh, Mike, he was sitting in the green one, room. Guys, a lot of times, Skip, get so caught up in the, I want to go early, I want to go first, as opposed to going to the right situation. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He went to the right 
situation. Mm -hmm. Someone that can nurture and cultivate his talent. Yep. Because they, they're like, if we select this kid, Skip, you can't have conventional wisdom in your thought process mm -hmm. of how you're going to bring him along. You got to need, you need someone mm -hmm. that's had a, had a very similar situation. Mm -hmm. Greg Roman went to the Super Bowl with a quarterback with a very similar skill set. Yep. Hmm. And he got RG3 as a backup. That so yes. some correct. more intellect in the room. That, that is true. At first, I did not love his motion. It looked a little awkward to me. I've said to you I before, yours yeah. was so yeah. pure when, when you, you, you just had a cannon on He's a little more side on. Big yeah. was more over the top. Yeah. Over the top. All of a sudden, Lamar Jackson is flicking missiles. It's just like a little pew. And it just skip that first right. completion, that first completion to Andrews. Yeah, where he got it, and the the linebacker almost got it, and it was just like barely over his half. Like, do I'm your watch, thing. I'm watching the game yesterday, and I'm thinking about you know, much the strong arm that I had, and the gift and the curse that came along with it. Sometimes yep. it, it can screw with your accuracy, and you know, you mentioned Lamar's throwing motion and huh. the way the ball comes out, but. It's an accurate pass. <laughs> it is. And it has enough velocity to, to attack oh. any area of the field, which makes this guy so dangerous. As he continue to just build the mental capacity to play the quarterback position right. within his, this offense or whatever offense that comes along, it's just going to be exciting to see how this man progresses. I'm afraid he's going to play. shatter your rushing records. Yep, and he's I'm, on his way. Yep. Yeah, he's I mean, on his way. We'll be talking about it you know, and in it the future. And it seems like you're okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I said before. You had it for a long time. I had it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. and I, I will be honest. I didn't think it would ever be broken. Wow. I didn't think I a didn't guy think would so come either. along and play between the tight hashes and do the things that I've done. But it's just a pleasure, I'll say it again, for me to watch mm -hmm. and, and see another guy, you know, kind of just emulating that style mm -hmm. and doing it better. Oh, he's averaging 79 well rush said. yards per game. Mm -hmm. But the idea of picturing him in the green room. As everyone came before him, that's pretty powerful. That was it's motivating. That would be motivation for a long time. Probably, yeah. Until he put a ring on his finger. Like yeah. the whole team is feeling that way. No mercy. Colin Kaepernick's workout was scheduled to be at the Falcons facility on Saturday, but 30 minutes before the workout was set to begin, Kaepernick announced he would be conducting his own workout at a local Atlanta area high school instead. Kaepernick's agent said they changed the venue because of the unusual liability waiver the NFL asked Colin to sign and because the league would not allow media to attend the workout. Kaepernick threw for 45 minutes in front of reps from eight NFL teams. And afterwards, Cap said he has been ready to play for the past three years and the ball is now in the league's court. So, Shannon, uh, from all of this, what is your biggest takeaway? I'm disappointed with how Cap handled the situation. I think everybody knows that's watched this show for the last three years, Skip. I've been one of Cap's biggest supporters. You and I talk, talked about this, I believe, every single day for about three or four months. When everybody else touched on it at the beginning and left the subject alone, you and I talked about it. I talked to Cap. I knew how much he wanted to get back into the league. Mm -hmm. And I even coined the term. I said, coined the term. Mm -hmm. I said, Cap has been white ball. That has not changed. But the way he handled this situation, Skip, now... He knew that he received this on a very short notice. Mm -hmm. He could have said, you know, I, my representative have just given me word that the NFL has set up a, a workout for me. I will get back to you as soon as I know more details. He jumped in head first. Mm -hmm. So you knew this was going to be on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. He turns around because what he did, Skip, he in his camp and his supporters says the NFL wants to control the narrative. Well, the NFL says, we damn sure not going to let you control the narrative. And he walked into a trap that they set because by him changing it, they say, see, he's a diva. That's more trouble than what he's worth. Mm -hmm. Now, you had 25 was there because let me tell you what happens. And I'm going to put it in terms that people can understand. Skip, but let's just say for the sake of argument, there's something going on. You don't really want to attend anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes before you're supposed to get there, you receive a call that says, we're moving the venue. What do you think you're going to do? I'm good. Thank you. And that's what 25 did. That's what uh, 17 of the, the 25 that were there, they said, no, nah, we good. Well, it's, the, the dry, it's over an hour drive. It is, it's, in a, it's in a flowery branch. Mm -hmm. uh, north. That's, what, that's what, way, north. Way, way, way north. Way north. Way north. In this and high school. This is south. Way like south. south. And I know people say, well, but if they came there, they could have saw him play. Riverdale is like mm -hmm. the airport, like okay. 15, 20 minutes that's away. That's true. But they didn't want to be there to begin with. So this was the end. My thing is, Skip, if you wanted the media to be there, you could have just scheduled your own workout. You see, what Cap is trying to do is Cap is trying to appease an audience 
that has no role in him getting a job. You can showcase your talent for the media all you want to. You can try to appease your fan base all you want to, but they will play no role in you getting a job. Cap, you show up to a job interview with a Kunta Kente shirt? You trying to antagonize? I get it. Cap keeping it real. Cap gonna keep it real and keep being unemployed. Yep. Because the people, and then he, he came out as, as like belligerent, like angry. NFL 32 owners, Roger Goodell, stop running. Scouts, tell your bosses, I'm ready. Really? So you know what they saying? This is it. Mm-hmm. We good. Bro, I came out here. Those that saw me saw the way that I can still throw the football. I can still play at a very, very high level. All I want now, if anybody that's going to watch this video, hopefully the people that were in attendance, they can go back and tell their people to bring me in for a closer look. I have no problem. But to defiantly say, mm. bro, when you're dealing with men of wealth and power, they do not like to be told what to do. And when they, when normally, and through my experience, mm-hmm. when you tell someone like that, do this or else, they'll always choose else. Mm. I thought there was a very, very small chance. I thought it was like on Saturn that he could get back. But this has moved way past Pluto. Mm-hmm. I don't see a scenario that Colin Kaepernick plays another down in the NFL. <sighs> Unfortunately, I agree with every point you just made. And I am sorry, but I am done defending Colin Kaepernick on this show. I've heard from several people in and around the NFL who have fought for Colin to Mm -hmm. get back in. They're done. They're so disappointed, almost ashamed of of how it played out on Saturday. And again, I echo what you said. For three years, I have fought for him on this show, and I still believe he had historical impact with his protests. Steve, I still believe the call was worthy. It was. The, The cause was... It was worthy enough for him to risk his job. And now what little chance he had of getting a job back, he has lost. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty clear to me that Colin no longer wants to play football. It's pretty clear that he's only interested in being a bigger and bigger martyr. And that's okay with me. But that's what that screamed to me on Saturday, Mm -hmm. is that he just wants people to feel sorrier and sorrier for him. And again... That there was a Dan Patrick report that Jay-Z was behind one team, you know, pushing for Colin to, to get a, like a combine style showcase. Right. Was it bogus? Was it, was it really, was the NFL's heart in it? I don't know. We both were pretty leery of it. Yes. But still, we, we both agreed, okay, there's, there's a slim chance sure. that one representative will say, man, he looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. We, we like the way he's handling himself. Right. This is a new Colin Kaepernick. Maybe we should think about this. And there's also rampant reports this morning that Jay-Z was very upset with the way Colin reacted and handled Saturday. Right. Because the NFL, first off, sent him a couple of days before the standard waiver that everybody signs to go to the combine right. or to any free agent workout on a Tuesday at any NFL right. facility. Mm-hmm. It's just standard boilerplate right. plate sort of waiver. Right. It. Okay. Just to protect the team, or in this case, the NFL. Right. No, they tore it up and sent back something that was outrageously unsignable for the NFL. And then it got down to, uh, reportedly, Colin and his agents wanted uh, their own film crew there. And the NFL said, okay. But then I read that Nike was planning to do a commercial. Maybe they still will do a commercial featuring a letter that Colin wrote when he was in fourth grade about, I want to play in the NFL. Well, this is another sympathy play, and it's fine. But, but, but Nike, yeah. but it's been reported that Nike wants the NFL to retract that because yeah. they said they weren't shooting the okay, commercial. Okay, well, they did. But, but again, they are saying that they, are, they were playing a commercial. Right. I think that was a fact. Okay. But they, whether they were going to shoot, they At said we didn't have a crew there. Right. Yeah. I don't know if Colin's crew is going to contribute to this. I don't know. That's true. So then they move it to the other venue. And one of the receivers I talked to was there, said it was down to, he counted seven reps who okay. made it from the 24 who were there originally okay. up in Flowery Branch. Flowery Branch. Okay. And then we get down to the T-shirt. And again, we, we all know about Kunta Kinte and we know about Roots, but it's, it's the wrong place in the wrong yes! time because you're just saying, I'm still a social justice crusader. I'm still fighting. And you know and I know 
that the, these teams don't, that this is what they don't want right now. They're, they're going to say, we're not going to give our stage back to you if you're still wanting to fight for what you believe is right, which no one has a problem. You know, you do that. Right. You go do that on your own. But it's a job interview. Right. And that's, that's yeah. no, that's not putting the foot forward that the NFL would want to see. It's just like if, like if, if uh, who, let's just say Herbert or Joe Burrow, they're having a workout. They open it up to the public. But if it chooses to be private, mm-hmm. it's private. If that goes, if I was were to, if I got released during the season, I go work out. I can't say, well, you know, y'all guys film me, but I want to film myself also. I can add. But my here's my story in a nutshell, Skip. If you distrust the NFL so much, why the hell you want to get back in bed I agree. with them? Yeah. I don't th- 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 forget everything else. Yep. They wronged you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do I believe Colin Kaepernick could have played three yes. years ago? Yes. 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 Give it an opportunity. Sure. Yes. But at the end of the day, you distrust them so much. Well, what if they cut and splice it and make me look bad? If you feel this way, why do you still want an opportunity to be in bed with them? That's what I don't get. And skip the stop. Cap, bro, I love you. I, I believe the call, but you're not Kuta Kente. I understand, Roos. It was the Alex Haley autobiography about how he traced his past. Past, mm-hmm. and Kuta Kente was a, was a, a family member. Mm-hmm. Cap, you're not that. Well, he was a slave. Yes. And he went to And we need to stop this notion. Yep. You, you, you get stopped mm-hmm. and you, you, you show up at a job. What job interview? Mm-hmm. You going to, I mean, you going to work for uh, 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 Goldman Sachs and you going to work for some prominent law firm. You going to show up at, at, at Fox Studios for, and you going to show up with that shirt and you want a job. It's a good mm-hmm. example, though. It's a job. I get it. Yeah, but guess what? You know what? People at the barbecue, cap ain't sell out. Cap ain't sell out. Oh, I got it. Okay, I get all that. Yeah. But he's in the same place. But what, what has he accomplished? Cap ain't getting a job. Yeah, well, what has he accomplished? Okay, you could have played it this way. You could have played it straight. You could have showed up, and you could have balled out. Because I think he threw the ball very well. Yes. Hard. And you could have said and done all the right things that needed to get said at that Thank point. You. And then the ball goes right back in the NFL's right. court, and it's like everybody's saying, and? And? Skip. Now there's, that, that's over. When people ask me, say, Shannon, you're a seventh-round draft pick mm-hmm. and you made it in the NFL and you end up winning the Super Bowl and going to the Hall of Fame. I said, what did you what? I said, I went to work every day. Yeah. And I said, I needed to give the I needed to give the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens one reason to keep me. Mm. All cap, he could not give them a reason to say, hell no, go away. Mm-mm. And he gave them 10. He did. Give them one reason. Mm-hmm. One. And Cap gave them numerous reasons. What to say, you see, I'm good. I just don't. Skip, if I don't trust you, I ain't got nothing for you. Mm-hmm. We can't do business together. We can't hang out. I'm good. You good? Okay, you cool. But if I don't trust, trust is everything without that. Mm-hmm. I don't care how much, how great a woman looks. I don't care how much she has. If I don't trust you, I can't be with you. Mm. That's interesting about so what? Trust. So what are, we, what are we doing here, Cap? You don't trust the NFL. You're so defiant in your stance with the NFL, mm-hmm. yet you could have said no. He could have easily said no to the NFL's offer, mm. says I'm staging my own. But you know what? When he did that a couple of years ago, Skip, how many people showed up to watch him throw? Mm-hmm. Bottom line, I still greatly appreciate and honor all he did for that cause. Yes! He risked his job. Yes! And he lost his job. Yes! And I'm afraid it's going to stay lost. Yes! Okay. All right. Possibly uh, the end of a chapter here on the show with Kaepernick. No mercy. The Cowboys got back to their winning ways yesterday, taking down the Lions 35-27. to Ezekiel Elliott was held to only 45 rushing yards, but hauled in a receiving touchdown and celebrated by doing his best Dak warm-up impression. <laughs> oh, everyone's doing it. Dak <laughs> led the way through the air with 444 yards, three touchdowns. The Cowboys are now 6-4 and four with sole possession of first place in the NFC East. We're now joined by Hall of Famer and NFL Network analyst Ladanian Tomlinson. Mm. Good to have you with us yes, this morning. Yes, welcome back. And by the way, when I greeted Ladanian this morning, I said, forgive me for this, but I can't call you LT because there's just one of those. He's like a, he's like a football god to me. Oh. What was your answer? Hey, 
LT, the original, said, call me BLT. Baby LT. <laughs> Baby LT. I like that. Baby you, that you know what? Problem. BLT works. It's yeah. clever. It's and that sounds just like some LT was saying too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ladanian, when you look at these Cowboys, in your opinion, how far can this team go? Well, that's that's a really good question. I, I do believe that they are the best team in, in, in NFC East. Thank you. So now when we talk about being the best team, that means you're going to have a home, home playoff game, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you're probably going to be playing in a wild card game against a team like Minnesota mm -hmm. or maybe even... Who are the uh, dust? <laughs> I don't mind so, that one. Well, did so, they dust us dust. or did they edge us? No, I dust. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. <laughs> you... Either Seattle or San Francisco probably will be other team that you would have to play at home. Now, I believe the Cowboys can beat Minnesota and San Francisco at home. Seattle, to me, Seattle has a lot of experience. They've been there and done that. They have the coaching experience. And the problem to me with the Cowboys at times is Kellen Moore's inexperience shows up. We've seen it in mm -hmm. the past, guys. Mm -hmm. I do think as a team, they have all the talent to make a deep run. Mm -hmm. I just think when it comes down to it, if you're playing a team like um, Seattle, that inexperience at times where you, you're not very creative at times on offense, that's going to come back to bite you. Remember so, they beat Seattle in a home playoff game last year. Okay. So. That, 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 well, that was before MVP Russ. Yeah. That was a Old true. MVP Russ, yeah. he's different. And, and okay. Clowney now. Clowney now he's being on that defense, I agree. they're, they're mm -hmm. a different football team. Yep. But I do believe... This Cowboy team can get past the wild card round. Divisional round is when they probably will have to play a team like the Saints, you know, and, and then on the road, on the road. with Drew Brees, which would yep. be a, a mm -hmm. difficult task. Mm -hmm. So I give them getting past the wild card round mm. and that divisional round mm. would be to me. I don't. Well, because I'll, of the inexperience. I'll take that. I don't. Because that, that, that'd make me five I don't. more cases of I Oh, that's I, 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 I don't. Yeah. I don't. I still well, got them missing the playoffs. They're too inconsistent. Mm. Because that defense gave up to Jeff Driscoll, 27 points. How about this here? They got six wins. They got one win over a team that's got more than three wins. Hmm. Could I interest you in that? Now, when you play, if you make the playoff, what? You're not going anywhere. So get your... Temper it down. I know. I know you all excited. Been banging on the table. Your fish should be hurt. Mm. Banging the table. Black and blue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every <laughs> just like really your go hope. At it. Your hope's gonna be like that. Skip. If you look at the schedules down the stretch, the schedule really favors. I mean, Eagles have Seattle, Miami, the Giants, Washington. Gonna get you guys the Cowboys. That'll be your, that'll be the uh, death blow right there. And then mm. get the Giants again. And you guys got New England, Buffalo. Ooh, Buff Buffalo got a lot of defense. Chicago with your uh, the Rams. Mm. Mm -hmm. The Eagles. Mm. That's mm. it. Oh, it's going to come down. That's going to be the game right there. Because only one team is coming out of the NFC East. Mm. There's going to be two teams from the West. But yeah. the Cowboys have owned the Eagles lately. Mm -hmm. The last two, them. three years, three. they have Shannon, owned them. We got them. We got them. Mm. Hey. hey. Uh, full disclaimer, Shannon, LT know. is from Dallas. <laughs> hey, he got a house. He just built a house what, in Dallas. What they got to yeah, do with God, the truth? It's closer to Fort Worth. No, he I don't care. He went to TCU. Exactly. He's a Fort Worth He man. grew up loving the Cowboys. <laughs> Emmitt Smith was his what favorite player. The truth. He went, did you go to Emmitt Smith football game? I did. Okay. <laughs> so what? So, so what? So Who wouldn't thing. go to Emmitt Smith football game? Exactly. <laughs> he just wanted to be a running back. That's all it wasn't about being a Cowboy. Oh, yeah. Well, he wanted to be a Cowboy. You had... You nice. to, don't go there. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. So what did you just tell me about MVP Russ? He's arrived. Yeah! He's, he's, according to you, he's edging out right now Lamar Jackson yep. for MVP. Neck and neck. Got Guess it. who goes to Philly this coming Sunday? MVP Russ. We'll, we'll he's going to be there. We'll, oh, we'll, you're going to get MVP we'll get Russ. We'll get it. Well, you didn't get Brady, so I don't know. But we're going to get Lane Johnson back. Uh, if we don't get Lane Johnson back, we ain't getting, we ain't getting MVP Russ because Clowney going to have a field day. So I'm going to utter my confession once again. My team, the Dallas Cowboys, is driving me out of my mind on a weekly basis. <laughs> it's costing me years off the end of my life. We believe that because as Because well. my wife keeps yelling at me, you got to calm down, man. You just got to stop it. Because I go berserk yeah. during Cowboy games because they make me berserk. Howie Long talked about it yesterday on our pregame show on Fox. They're so talented. You just said, that's a talented. You go down the just on paper roster sure. and you say, whew, they just don't play up to it. Right. I don't know why. I don't know why not. I think they need a new head coach, just a new voice in they the locker They play up to it at some po certain so points of the game. And, and, but and they're maybe not even consistently. in fits and starts right. during the game. But seven out of ten times, they've trailed immediately. Yeah. They've fallen behind immediately in seven of their ten games. That's not a championship team. Nope. And yet, the quarterback is playing at a championship yes, level to me. Yes, he, he would be in this MVP race 
if not for a couple of blown games at the end, the Minnesota game when they went Zeke, Zeke, Zeke mm -hmm. at the end of the game. I'm like, we're all, what are you doing? Is it Kellen Moore? Or did Jason Garrett intervene and say, run it, run it, and then throw it to Zeke? I don't know. But something went wrong because the quarterback was on fire against Minnesota. And I'm with you. Could they beat Minnesota in a home playoff game? Yes, they could. They almost beat them in that Sunday night they game. They should have. You see, they what, you see what old Ken Folk Kirk did yesterday? He did. Oh, down exactly. 20. Finally someone um, brings it up. Down 20. Uh, hey, it's mm -hmm. never been come done on, like Ken, that. Come on, Ken, show Broncos. Mm. We're not I mean, talking about on. them. Come don't on. care who they're playing. And then I saw Kirk at the podium after the game, and he said, somebody just texted me and said it took a special person to pull off that comeback. So he's telling the world. Wow. Somebody texted him to say who you're that? a special hey, person. Let him have his moment. Why would you say that? Let him what are you have doing? his moment. You're not special. Huh? You're not special, Kirk. Oh, okay. Somebody text you a lie. <laughs> That was his wife. His wife gave him that. You know, she's expecting you know, a second know. child. So I don't care that guy. Spe you special. Yeah. So here's my bottom line to my team. Right now, it's all quarterback or bust. I don't like any other phase of this football team. I don't know why. Zeke just doesn't look right to me. He doesn't look like that guy who used to lead this team. And they can't run it or stop the run. They can't stop the pass, and they don't take the ball away on defense. They're tied for 20th in takeaways. Not a That's a recipe for disaster because in any given Sunday, if the quarterback doesn't play at a supremely high level, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, you're going to catch a hell. Jeff Driscoll almost happened yesterday. Right. It's 35 to 27, and it's second and 10 at the 13 with 154 left. And, and I'm pacing, man, because if you don't convert this and you give Dr Jeff Driscoll mm -hmm. the ball back, he just might convert on you right. and go for two and beat you at Detroit. What? And my quarterback makes another play to Shannon Jarwin. Blake Jarwin <laughs> throws it to Blake Jarwin for a first down to kill the clock. Yep. He took that. That's how close it was at Detroit. Yep. So my team's hanging in at six and four. I agree with you. I still like my team better than I like the but Eagles. you need Dak to play like that. You, right? Every this game. This is what we've been waiting okay. for because you can't expect, to me, you can't expect Zeke to be able to run the football like he have in the past. We haven't seen that, Zeke, quite honestly. Right? Nope. And we, we haven't have seen the offensive line play to the, and, those and standards. Why aren't we seeing that Zeke? I love Zeke, but I keep I, waiting for Zeke, and well, I don't see well, him. Shay, Shay know this. Anytime you have a young quarterback, you got a young offense coordinator, you're going to want to try to uplift that young quarterback to be in the MVP race, right? Okay. And so naturally, you're not going to run the ball as much as you used to. You want to use all those weapons. They have massive weapons at the wide receiver okay. position. Gallup has stepped up. Randall Cobb has stepped yep. up. I love their receiving core. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. amari has been hurt yes. off and on the But when he's healthy, oh, he, okay. he, 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 he's, yeah. he's oh, tough he to deal with. Something. Yeah. But Ladanian, so many times they give it to Zeke on first down and it goes for none or one. And I'm like, it's too predictable. second and nine, yes. second and nine. Predictable. Second and nine gets hard. Mm. Then it gets to third and five and it gets hard. You know how hard yeah. it is to keep yeah. converting. A lot of teams throw the ball on first down. Yeah. Dallas exactly. always comes out. They always, it's too in the I formation, and, just and now, it to now I say, just get it over with. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. pacing, watch I said, go ahead and get it over with. Right. I got it, it's second and nine. <laughs> just, they, they should just, just cash out the first down and just tell them to flip it over and say it's second and nine, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. <sighs> Because they do, they do make that degree of difficulty. Because, I mean, he's been unbelievable. But you can't make a living picking up third and 12, third no, and 14 for extended periods of time. They are leading the NFL in third down conversions. And it's mostly because he'll find somebody right. somehow. Wow. Oh. And mm. Zeke made a nice little snag up off yeah, the park on that, that little screen pass. It was good. He can do that. He's yeah. got really good hands. Yeah. But then he turned, and I saw a little bit of burst from him, but I never get to see it anymore because there's nowhere to burst. Right. They need to get him in space a little bit more. You know that little route that they did with Tony Pollard? You know, oh. He scored on. Yeah. They hey, used to Tony do that Pollard's with Zeke. Electric. I've been I've been banging the table for them to do that more with okay. Zeke. And, and this is going to be blasphemy probably to you, but the stat of the night was Tony Pollard – Every game that he has gone 12 or more plays, played 12 or more plays, they're 6 and 0. Oh. Hmm. Uh oh, so, stop a skip. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm That's just crazy. saying. That is crazy. That's crazy okay. So, so maybe you play both of them because they yeah. yesterday they played both of them together a couple yeah. times. Oh, uh, uh, Cleveland's uh, doing it. Yeah, they Kareem are. Cream Hunt and Nick Chubb. Yeah. You know what, Skill Baylor? They've been six. They've been six and 0. Oh. Mm -hmm. And their six victory: Giants twice, Redskins, Miami. Eagles. Say it. Say it. Say, go, say it. Say it again. Go, go, go. Say it loud. Who else did they beat? Uh, what did they do in Minnesota? 
Uh, against he didn't play against. What did he do against the Jets? Did he play against the Jets? Ooh. Did they play the what, what about Green Bay? Didn't play 12 plays. Oh, uh, yeah. Why? Why is that? I don't know. Ask Coach Clapp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. that's a problem. Maybe it is the slow they start the, the motivation. Yeah, they lost. They lost. Now they're heading to face the Patriots. They call, they call, they, they, they call it with, with, with Bridgewater. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, Drew, with Drew, Drew get back. Mm. If Teddy Bridge, if the look here. Now, one thing when I went to class is the substitute was there. She wasn't spanking me. Mm. The substitute teacher couldn't lay hands on me. Y'all let the substitute teacher spank you. Could the real teacher lay hands? Yeah, on you? yeah. Ooh. They told me. They told me. Uh, only for talking. They say I talk. Yeah, too much. I uh, surprise, you? surprise. Wait, yeah. They said you talk too much. I, let me tell you, you, that like you, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> They say, well, Shannon, you need to go home and talk. So I try to talk. My grandma said, boy, take that mess to school. <laughs> so guess who won out? I got to live with Granny. Yeah, I'm going to come here and talk up a storm. And look I where you ended up. Yeah, I you take can this talk every single day. Mm. My grandma going to come short of killing me. I ain't. Mm. You've had this saved up. I appreciate it. Substitute teacher, be And dog. you're still talking a whole lot of nothing. No, 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 no. With a win against the Eagles, the Patriots advance to 9-1 and on the season, and they hold on to their lead in the AFC. The Ravens kept pace, though, cruising to a 41-7 victory against the Texans. Baltimore remains right on the heels of New England with an 8-2 and record. LaDainian Tomlinson is still with us. So, LaDainian, when you look at the AFC, uh, who wins, the Patriots or Ravens? Mm. That's a good question. I, I... You know, for me right now, mm -hmm. I think Baltimore is the better team Oof. because when I'm comparing defenses, that's how I always start to compare these teams. I think they cancel each other out, guys. Both defenses are very good. To me right now, the Patriots are deficient at the wide receiver position in terms of speed. Like, if you don't have speed on offense, no one respects you. And against that Baltimore defense, I believe they can shut them down more than the Patriots can shut Baltimore down. Simply also – because Baltimore's offense is something we haven't seen before. It's just too difficult to stop it because we just haven't seen it enough. Although, did you guys see when the Patriots and Baltimore played during the game, did you see what Bill Belichick was doing the whole time? He was taking notes during the game because mm -hmm. he knows that when it comes to the playoffs, they're going to see this team again. And so that might be, you know, some adjustments, obviously, that will be made. But, guys, I'm not, I'm not ready to count out Kansas City. Not yet. Mm. Just because of the way they can score, right. I think that defense will start to come around and play a little bit better. We've seen glimpses of that defense playing better. Mm -hmm. So right now, in my opinion, I think it's Baltimore and Kansas City, mm. the two wow. best teams in mm. the AFC. I need to see something from Kansas City tonight. Yeah, especially yeah. the defense. I know. You don't concern you. I don't really concern mm. myself with the offense. Right. The defense leaves a lot Haven't to be they desired. Lost, what is it, three of their last four? four. They have. Yeah. I, I would take the Ravens right now. Skip, let me say at the beginning of the season. I would say, Skip, in 2019, Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson, which one you think will have a better 2019? Everybody, man, get out of my face. Yeah, not even. Oh, good boy, well, Lamar Jackson ain't going to have no better season. And at this point, he's outplayed Tom. Yep. He has. And I give you that. I think that's the biggest surprise because he's been unbelievable this year and it's elevated their play. They're running the football. You gave the stat over 200 yards rushing wow. as a team. You're not going to lose. And they're just crushing the field. Yeah. San Francisco's next at 149 a game. Because what, what, yeah. what that does, it keep, if you got an explosive offense, mm -hmm. it keeps them on the sideline. Mm -hmm. That's where they come into it. And that's why they almost they always play Kansas City so tough because they limit the amount of possessions that they're going to have. Well, they'll limit Tom Brady because I still believe the best way to beat this team is to keep his butt on the oh, sideline. Yeah, of course. Because he can say, yeah. He can summon something occasionally. You just don't want it to be that occasion that you happen to be playing him that he summons that greatness that we've seen yep. for him for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I will take them. I like their defense. Jimmy Smith was a first-rounder. Marlon Humphrey was a first-rounder. Earl Thomas, Marcus Peters, all those DBs were first-rounders. Brandon Carr was a first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. So they're – Skip, they don't have the big name, LT, that the Ray Lewis's, the Suggs, or the Ed Reed. But uh, Wink Martindale, Don Martindale, the defensive coordinator for the Ravens, he does a great job in the scheme. He's come from that old, again, come from that Rex Ryan. They yep. get real exotic. They do a lot of different things, give you a lot of different looks. Um, so, but right now, you got to play a perfect game. You don't beat them going to New England, and come, especially the playoffs, if you don't play perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You turn it over, you're probably going to, if you turn it over just once, you're probably going to lose that game. Mm -hmm. You got to play flawless and catch them off just a little bit. Hope Tom Brady is playing like he what we've seen him play for the most the large chunk of this season, and you have an excellent chance to go in there and upset mm. him. 
I must say that our man BLT here <laughs> made some strong points. <laughs> when you start with those defenses, you're right. I like that. And I hark back to a Super Bowl that I covered after the 2001 season, and I laughed at everybody all week who made any case that the New England Patriots with this first-year starter at quarterback had any chance against the St. Louis Rams who were just dominating, Great just blowing turf, people yeah. out. What were they, like 16-point favorite? Maybe it was 14, mm-hmm. but it was, it was significant. Big. Yes. And you know the rest mm-hmm. of the story. It was Belichick's defense and that kid Brady. He did, he did okay down mm-hmm. the stretch of that game. Right. They, they let him throw the football and put Vinatieri in position right. to kick a 49-yard field goal. So I keep trying to talk myself into Lamar and company going to Foxborough and winning a game just because they've, they've arrived right before your very eyes. It's happening. Sure. Right. And I'm so dug in on Tom Brady that I still say he, he's not going to lose an AFC championship game at home. Right. But this team does have a legacy. It has a history that the kids know, Mm -hmm. that they feel what Ray left in the locker room, what you left in the locker room, what Suggs left in the locker room. They know there's a history there. They've they've gone up there three. They should have won all three games at Foxborough, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. You you went to a playoff game at Foxborough, and it didn't turn out because it's hard, man. And you remember it was cold. I beat them with the Jets. You beat them with the Jets. Oh, you did. That's a good point. Very good point. Yep, Yep. that was at Foxborough. That was a big win. Brady's 20 and 3 in home playoff games, so you're responsible for one of them. Yeah, they don't don't lose often. Because you you have to play perfect. Yeah. Because normally teams, and the thing is, they don't beat themselves. They just, they'll they'll go along and knowing that Mm -hmm. there's a great chance that you're going to make that one mistake. Punt. Fumble, interception. Okay. They don't do anything. Okay, so, so why did the Giants upset Tom Brady in the first Eli Super Bowl? Because the last regular season game, they played the hell out of them. Yeah. They, they play, it was 38 to 35, yeah. I believe. They lost, yeah. but it was close. Yeah. And nobody thought they could even touch that team. Right. And then they go into the Super Bowl and they say, you know what? Mm. Yeah. The, we can play yeah, with it. And, and, and that's what it took. See, they didn't beat them, but it's like, you know what? We played them close. Nobody else had ever gotten that mm-hmm. close to them. Nope. Mm-hmm. And so now Lamar Jackson and that team says, hold on. Yeah. We beat this team. This they, team is very yeah. beatable. I, I thought they, they crushed them. dominated. They, yes, they, they really did. did dominate. Right? They did. Yeah. Okay, but they so, can't leave it close, though. You know, Tom Brady no. in the playoffs when it's close, he finds a way to mm-hmm. make that, that critical drive at the end of the game mm-hmm. to beat you. Yep. Yeah. So you can't leave it close. Right. In the playoffs. Right now, I just can't see the pieces on on offense. Yeah. Isaiah Wynn's coming back at left tackle, and I do think that's going to make a big difference. Mm-hmm. But I thought Nikhil Harry, their first-round pick, Arizona State, because I, I watched him a lot in college, yeah. he, he's dynamic. Right. I didn't see dynamic yesterday, but he's a kid. He's just one game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let him get his legs back. Injury. He better. some speed, though. Yeah. Hey. Oh, high expectations. Well, they thought they had it with AB, mm-hmm. and then yeah. I know. that situation. Mm. Well, Gronk's got a big "Quote unquote" announcement tomorrow. Uh-oh. I don't know. Is that? That's oh, what he says. Skip, I don't know. I, I find it hard to You've believe. You've seen him on the pregame. I know. <laughs> you had lunch with him. I, I, I hope. I hope you're not thinking that he's making an announcement. He's going back. I, I hope you're not pinning your hopes to that. My gut tells me he will not announce. That. <laughs> I think he's looking pretty comfortable yeah. with our guys. He's very comfortable. On Sunday. Yeah. Now I'm not going. Time. I'm not going to say he won't be go back. Maybe at a later date and time, but it just won't be this year. But right now. Time is running out this year. (laughs) No, I don't think it's going to be this year, Skip. I'm sorry. Mm. Looking forward to Cowboys Patriots. That should be a good one. Ladanian, great to have you. It was really nice to have you join us today. Thanks for being here. No mercy. And how about this? LeBron, he dropped two double-double performances over the weekend. He put up 29 points, 11 assists, and a thunderous dunk that sent social media into a frenzy against the Kings on Friday. Then, with Kobe in attendance last night, LeBron went 6 for 10 from beyond the arc. He also had 33 points, 13 assists, and an easy win against the Hawks. So, Shannon, how impressive was your guy, LeBron, over the weekend? Hey, uh, look, I look to you. It look good to me. Yeah. Oh, Wash King. How Yo, good? Wash. Oh, boy. I, I keep t- now, I told people last year. I said, if you're a foreign big man, do not stand up under the rim when LeBron's coming down there. <laughs> now, he got. Why, why did they have to be foreign? Do, yeah. Do you have something against foreign? Yeah, yeah. General? We will punish y'all. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he caught, you remember, caught Nurkic? Nurkic ain't back yet. Oh, mm. I remember. Body that. bagged him. I, I don't think that's because that's of because of that. <laughs> he called yeah. he called Saric last year in Philly. Yeah. Sar Saric done trying to dodge him, just going all around, just hadn't trying to been the same. Hadn't been the same. Yeah. And then he called Bielitsa. Mm. Oh my goodness! Mm. Uh, for a guy to now, just imagine, 
Can you imagine, Skip? Let's see. Hmm. He had 29, he had 29, 11, and 7. No, four rebounds. You just give, you know, on, on Friday night, he was perfect for the free throw mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. And then he went to the free throw line, you know, because you and everybody else wrote this report. LeBron shies away from the free throw line because he don't want to go to the line. Has his whole career. And, and what, what happened Friday night? Mm. What are you? you do I, it's my turn? No, that's your turn. Okay. Oh, and then last <laughs> night. Skip, last night, 33, 12, mm. no turnovers. Mm. I know a guy had 99. Mm. They thought he had that old Warren Sapp, that old Gretzky number. <laughs> yeah, nine oh. turnovers and nine assists. That ain't good. Like Skip, it. one for one. Six or ten. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, because you, LeBron is shooting 20% from the three-point line. Mm-hmm. I ain't heard you mention nothing about three-point lately. Mm-hmm. He been doing real good from the old three-line. What's he line. from the free-throw line? Help me Don't out. worry about that, Skip. Yeah. It's, oh, coming. it's coming. We're it's not coming. talking about it anymore? It's coming. Mm-hmm. But you saw that, Skip. Mm-hmm. Just a little sample. I, did. I saw it. Cause just, cause, so can you imagine <sighs> if he wasn't washed and unathletic what he would be doing? Mm. Mm. I can imagine. My turn. Please. Why does LeBron choose to dunk over foreign big men? Maybe because they can't jump. I don't know. Maybe because they're easy targets. Maybe because Bielitsa can't block anybody's shot but, at six feet, ten inches tall. Can we see that again, yo, please? I want to see, see it again. I see it again. I see it the first time. LeBron has the audacity to dunk over poor Bielitsa Woo! and then stare him down. Yep. As if he's a really, he, he's a... But, a credible foe. What does it matter? What does it I matter? I dunked on Bielitsa. Yeah. Way to go, LeBron. Yeah. Do- That's it. That immortalized you. And he put it up on his Instagram. Let me ask you with a question. Hashtag wash king, hashtag revenge season. Let me ask you on a question. Bielitsa? If you want to stare down Bielitsa? Yeah. But Are you, you proud of that? I am very proud I, of that. I wouldn't but be. Let me ask you I'd this. be ashamed. If you're washed and mm. unathletic, mm. what difference does it make mm. if he didn't jump? Because mm. you're not supposed to be able Which to do that. Which brings anyway. me to the last play of Friday night's game. The last two minute report on that game said LeBron offensive fouled Harrison Barnes that he should not have gone to the free throw. Oh, line. my goodness. But I, he did. I congratulated him via Twitter because. As I said, it's about damn time that you made some late game, close game free throws. And he finally did, albeit against the Sacramento Kings. Oh, that's, and a, that's a so so see Kings. That. I'll give you those two because it's been ages, eons, since he made one of two. You know, like, made like but he made both. He clutch. made two. Switched it. Wow. But, but you know what, Skip? I, but here's the thing that, see, that's, that's so puzzling, but it's really not puzzling. Now, last year when Hazonia... Mm. Block this shot. Yep. You came in here and say, Shannon, give it up. Mm-hmm. It's over. Mm. Now he doing dirt. Mm. He putting butts in everybody. Really? Now all of a sudden, why he want to do be, be a Lisa mm. like that? Mm. Cause. Well, pick on somebody your own size. <laughs> Come on. Be a Lisa taller than he is. Well, why didn't you dunk on him bead that way and stare him down? I want to see that, please. Oh, a bead fouled yeah. You remember being bead fouled him? Bead fired him. Be said, you're not going to put me on no poster. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But see, when see you, but all the low lights. Yeah. Let's, can we see? Let's just take one oh. last look at LeBron low light. Do you want to see him now? No, no, oh, no. Okay. Now, look at it. He yeah. threw the ball into the backboard. He got his shot block. Oh, well, he did. Rolled the ball up the floor was and that, kicked it out of was bounds. That, was, that Rudy, was, him. was that yeah. Rudy Gobert that blocked his shot? Yeah. Was that Will? Was, come on. So then it was like, Kobe came to see me last night. No, he well, didn't. the truth was, Kobe came to promote his children's fantasy book, number one, and Kobe's daughter, Gigi, who's going to be a superstar. She loves basketball. She loves Trey Young. Mm-hmm. So how many visits do the Atlanta Hawks make to Staples? One. So I think... Daughter said, Daddy, will you please take me tonight? So let's not overreact Ooh, to so this was Kobe blesses LeBron. LeBron. No, 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 His no, no. revenge season. Wow. Hashtag. First of all, Kobe is a very busy man. Yep. We know how methodical, maniacal he is. Mm-hmm. He has that same approach to basketball. He's now took that to film mm. and storytelling. I agree. So he doesn't really have time because mm. I think Kobe's in Newport to fly down mm. and get back. Oh, so okay. his mindset is like, I'm making movies, I'm writing children's mm. books. But it is, because most of those guys that's on that roster, mm-hmm. they looked up to Kobe. Yep. Because so he's still he's still royalty. Mm-hmm. Because here's a guy that came straight from high school, and LeBron mentioned that. Mm-hmm. A he guy, did. He's like, well, Kobe did it, I, should, I can do it. Mm-hmm. So they're still, they're still, and I get it. Yes, it means something to have royalty. Mm-hmm. You know, when we, you know, we, the guys get back together, we come in there to Denver, mm. We royalty. Mm. We want a few things there, Skip. Are you saying you're royalty, I Roger? promise you. I suppose. In Kobe's mind, 
he thinks LeBron does not belong in his universe. No, he farther yeah. away. Mm. You're right. Mm. We are the universe unto ourselves. Mm. We are the, we are the mm. we're entity unto ourselves. Really? Yes. So who's he going to dunk on next? Jakob Pertl of the nah, Spurs? Nah. You know, we'll get, no, we're going to get Stephen Adams. Love Jakob. Stephen Adams up on Tuesday. Really? Yeah, uh, I'd be, I'd be we, more impressed And then we're going to get Nerlin Noel, too. And then we're going to get him on again because we got a back to back. Really? Or like somebody else I know that don't play back. As um, a matter of fact, Jenny, did you know? I haven't seen him since. Mm. I haven't seen him quite well, quiet. Mm. I mean, they say low, man, but you don't have to play back to back. But damn, you got to play some games, Kawhi. Hashtag revenge season, revenge. says LeBron. <laughs> and I dunked on Bielitsa. Dunked on him. Whoa. Nice. Way to go, LeBron. Catch, LeBron catch, stared me down. Catch, I'm yeah. mortified. He's like, I can't believe, yeah, LeBron, like, I can't believe you, I can't believe you jumped. Mm. I yeah. can't believe you did that. Yeah. Stare him down, LeBron. Oh, Fans love How it. you were trying to take a shot? The it. man is 260. Hmm. Coming down. Bielitsa? No, uh, LeBron. Bielitsa and you were trying to take a 10. He's not like LeBron's about 6'10. And, and he going to stay down and try to take a charge. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that you're happy about what yeah. you're saying. Way to go. I got a little passion. You, you beat Sacramento and Atlanta, it's over. <gasps> you know what, Skip? Throw that I, I parade. Didn't, I didn't want to do anything because yeah. I got a little something special with you coming on Wednesday. No mercy. Alabama was up 35-7 to with three minutes left in the second quarter when Tua Tungavailoa was tackled from behind and dislocated his hip. Tua is undergoing surgery today and will miss the remainder of the season. And Nick Saban said that they were warming up their backup QB but wanted to get Tua reps with the two-minute offense before pulling him from the game. So Shannon, should Saban have taken Tua out? of the game sooner. I believe so, Skip, and I know hindsight is a magnificent science, and Coach, uh, Coach Saban, had he known, obviously he would have taken him out. But you have the guy warming up. You can run two minutes next week against Western Carolina because I think it's some lower-tier lower, lower tier team that you're going to be playing against, Skip. Uh, it's just, plus, he was already banged up. I'm not so sure I would have played him anyway because he was a game-time decision to even play. Mm. And it's just... 35-7, I just bet, I bet you Coach Belichick says, you know what? Because it seems like, okay, he decided at the last minute to run two minutes. He says, I probably should have went with my first instinct. My mm. first gut was to take Tua out. Mm. And I bet you he'd wish he had stuck mm. with that decision. Shannon Sharp just criticized Nick Saban. I've criticized him First time him in the history of understanding. That, no, it's not. Yes, it was. <laughs> I do not blame Nick Saban for what happened because it wasn't even halftime yet. This was a, an incredibly freakish injury, and I still can't understand so how it happened. I keep watching the video saying, how did that come from that? It's horrible. It, it just as easily could have happened in the opening series against Western Carolina because you know what? I hate to say this, but Tua is proving extremely brittle, like he is extremely injury prone. Both Am I right? angles nice. Every yep. time I look up, it's something else going on, which will not help him at the next so level. Hard. Well, this definitely dings him because yeah. the hip situation, because you could, but Skip, you said away was, they never really straightened him out. So you could tell that something was wrong because when they set him on the cart, they set him at an angle. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Of one, of one, of one.